Hey, good, good morning, morning everybody. Everyone. Happy Sunday and happy Pride. I hope everybody's having an awesome Pride weekend and an awesome Sunday and, and Pride Day. We are. Today yep. is actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the 50th anniversary of San Francisco Pride. And oh, really? The wow. first one that is not, you know, going to be held outside. I feel like I went to the first one, but I didn't. No, I went, um, you know, we were going in the early 90s. Yeah. Certainly. Like, I probably went to my first Pride in 1987, would wow. be my guess. I didn't live in San Francisco yet, and it was just the craziest thing I'd ever seen. And it continued to be. It was cool. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, happy Pride. Welcome to the building chat today. Yeah. Today's going to be chat heavy, right? Lots of chat. I've... I've got this little shuttle out here that I'm just going to be fiddling around with while we talk, but it's not what we're talking about. No, it's no. Just, so, I just want bricks in my hands. So sort of following up on um, following up on last week's discussion, which was all about, um, like, where do you get all of your... Um, oh, yeah. It is logical. Yeah. Like, where did, you, where did you get all your Lego? Where do you store all your Lego? How yep. do you, um, you know, like, where do you source all your bricks? So we thought that today would be a good day to kind of talk about the other side. Once you have all those yeah. bricks, what, what do you do gonna, with them? What are you going to do yeah. with them? And we were actually inspired because this weekend we've been doing home improvement projects. Um, well, we've been trying to do home impro improvement projects, but evidently so is everyone else worldwide, right? So trying to get the supplies is challenging, but we found... Um, actually, from some wood that we took to the convention with uh, Treasure of the Snake Queen, we had to make oh, a plywood bottom for it so, so much it didn't wood. fall apart. <laughs> so we had so all this wood. wood in the hallway, and we turned it into shelves in our hallway up above the doors that we have stored a huge amount of, of Lego. Right? Yes, we have. A, we we got to store a bunch of stuff. Get it out of the studio. We're actually like I know we make have some like headway in here. Open floor. There's open space on both sides yes. of the table. It's it's turning into a studio. Um. So we have. Um. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure. What's up? Are we gonna say hi to people? Yeah. Let's go ahead and see who. You you seem to be today. lost in tech right now. I What's am. Going there's on? like a million different windows. Okay. There okay, you know. is it all good? <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, to say hi to everyone who's joining us, both um, we can say hi to people who are chatting, but also welcome to everyone on Facebook and um, YouTube who's not chatting. Yeah, so here's our here are our chatters for this morning. Yep. Uh, Cornado is here. Hey, how's it good going? Morning. Deneen is here. Uh, Debo Bricks. Uh, Big Screen Bird just showed up. How's it going? Uh, Hooded One is here. Insane, Insane Lego, Lego fan. fan. James McLeister. I think that's a new person we haven't seen I before. I think that's a new name. Hi. How's it going? Uh, JMW Music. Um, Lisa Head. Lisa Head Hi. is here. Marilyn Parmley. Hi, Marilyn. Uh, Mini Fig Chick, of course, who will also Yay. be joining us on screen here she shortly. Will. Uh, Molly Williams. How's it going? Uh, Remy Baker. Yep. Sadie is here. Hey, welcome. Um, Shane LeVan. Wilfred. Hey, Wilfred. Bonsoir. So glad you're here today. Awesome. And Kim and is here. Kim. And so, you know, Kino. it's funny. I, I haven't seen most of your faces or many of your faces I haven't seen, but now I've seen your builds. So I'm starting to, like, who you are in my head is associated with um, what your builds look like. Whoa. And then, of course, like the other, the like the really crazy one is we got to go um, the other night. Oh, yeah. We got um, onto the interwebs, onto Instagram. Tricky we... Lug After Dark. Tricky Lug After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Debo Bricks, formerly black, uh, formerly Blackjack. Hey, oh. good to see you. Um, uh, yeah, so so we, we saw um, After Dark. Oh, we yeah. Saw... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we saw um, JMW Music and Shane Levant doing their thing on uh, yep. Instagram. They were talking about their micro builds that they actually did for our last challenge. And then we got to see those builds afterwards. Yes. It was cool. And also, yeah. um, challenge. We're talking about challenge. Oh, challenge. And yes, look. Look what we have, Flynn. Oh, you do have right it. It's over, over there. here. All right, there we go. We have to reach further because we're not surrounded by toppling piles of bricks yes. anymore. So, um, so this is our challenge for this week is you are building something with only the bricks from this set. 
right? And, and maybe is... a base plate, and if you want to use other mini figures, you can do that too. Yeah, you can do, uh, you can absolutely do that. You may use a base plate and a mini figure of your choice added in. It's the Street Sweeper, the City Street yep. Sweeper set. And so um, now people should either buy a set or um, some people have one winging to them in the air. Yeah, right now, yeah. Right? I mean, it's not too late. You know, they're ne you're, uh, it's not due until Thursday. So you have plenty of time. And it's yep. only got 89 pieces. 89 so pieces. So you should be able to come up with something in a couple of days, I would think, even if it's too late. So if you run to your local. Curbside market, pickup. curbside pickup. Hopefully, they will have something. For yeah, you. our local Lego store <laughs> uh, is it doing curbside pickup or it did? And they were for a hot then... minute and then they stopped again. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's a flexible situation. Hey, you know what, Flint? Kirsten Dilts, how's it going? Guess yes. what? What's that? We have people wanting to join us, don't we? We do have people wanting to join us, and so yeah. Before we start on our on our little, you know, all of our little features, our features for the and day, and all that sort of business. Oh, coffee! Let's is on just it, on the go agenda. ahead and invite our guests. So yes, yeah, so today we have our um, our regular uh, our regular guests are with us uh, today: Harvey yep. Corman, Vicky Lawrence, and Tim Conway, and Lyle Wagoner, <laughs> and Lyle Wagoner, the dashing <laughs> Lyle Wagoner. <laughs> Oh my who goodness. was who played Mark Spitz in a in a recent episode? He played Mark Spitz in a recent episode of the Cal Burnett Show reruns that we've been watching, and he held for like the entire ep for the entire scene. He holds water in his hand so he can spit it out on a particular take. And he was also like in a, <laughs> he was he in, like a, a, in, a in a speedo, and he had like all the medals on. It was ridiculous. Mark yep. Spitz, look it up. All right. There's your educational <laughs> for today. All right, so yeah, so let's go ahead All and right. welcome everybody in. Who is it? Who have we got today? It's, uh, like I said, well, you know who we got today. We were just talking about it. There we right. go. No, 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 no. Uh, Minifig Hi. Chick is here. Hello, the top of her Wait, head is here the anyway. Bottom, there like, she is. Ba -num, ba -num. Hi. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hi, Kara, with your beautiful painted backdrop. Aren't those nice? I love that Robert Paintfisher painted them. Very nice. Lovely. Oh, look who else is here. Hello, Hello Modo. How's it going? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it ready in case something fun happens. <laughs> hey, so the hair is is in the back. What was that? I forgot the tarot yeah. of Modo's hair. Like, if if your hair is in the back, is that all oh, business? No. Yeah, it was. I should have it in front and, and be very casual. All right. <laughs> if you want, I'll, if, you know what? We'll do this today. I'll let the entire thing. What? Everyone, look out! Whoa. Right. There we go. It's still Holly a little wet, though, here. I have to dry out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very okay. nice. Yeah, I don't think I've yeah. ever seen it flowing. Holly is here. Hey, Holly. How's it going? And Ho Holly's got the <laughs> Veronica Lake over one shoulder going on. Yeah, everybody's got, like, the... I could do that now. But you could do over one <laughs> year. <laughs> Somebody stop me before I grab the clippers, because seriously, I can't take he, it anymore. He won't let me cut his hair, and he's probably right not to. No. So, okay, so everybody... We um so we have another guest. So Blair is here, and it's oh, his yeah. birthday. It's and he's his in birthday the, in the waiting room. So when it's he comes birthday. in, let's all like let's fill the chat with happy birthday, Blair, and we'll all say happy birthday when he comes in. Okay. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna we're not gonna sing this song, are we? No, it's okay. it, the, the delay is such that it's always yeah. terrifying. <laughs> having already hosted a few kids' birthday parties online, I can tell yeah. you that it is really unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so here we go. We're going to let Blair in, and then um, everybody, happy birthday in. Okay, here we go. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh, he has to join with computer audio. He has to click the uh -oh. thing. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. It always takes a second. We can see him. Look, everyone's saying happy birthday. Yes. Hey. Oh, the chat is blowing up. Yeah, the chat birthday is blowing up everywhere. with happy birthday Blairs and birthday cake <laughs> emojis you. and all of it. <laughs> all of the emojis. Nice. I can't keep up. Look at that. 
<laughs> oh, we can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you now, but you could turn yourself up a little bit, probably. If we could hear him now. How do I turn myself up? So, and also, we didn't get to say Happy Father's Day to you last weekend, but Happy Father's yeah. Day to you, too, and Happy oh, Birthday happy all at once. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a busy month. My daughter's birthday is also this month. Um, my little sister's birthday is a couple days before mine. So, yeah, it's been quite a month. <laughs> I bet. Nice. All right. Your mustache is very pointy today. I just it's, on, it, it. It, it, it's on point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Mustache on point. <laughs> you could do a great recreation of that Salvador Dali uh, photograph. It is my Dolly mustache. I've been a lifelong fan of his. Um, saw his retrospective in Philadelphia when I was a young teen. And um, yeah, I definitely went for it. I think I might have surpassed or at least have gotten to his length by now. I bet he, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> it's, it's, a good, awesome. it's a good nine years of growing. So, so is absolutely. Every is everybody ha having an enjoyable pride today, I hope? Oh, yes. So far, so yeah. good. Yeah. So far, so good. I'm just waiting for the uh, pins part to come out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, we have, I, of, of course, because we cleaned up everything now, I could, we actually have, like, an um, awesome pride Mickey pin that, like, is lost oh, in the please. ether somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. I'll tell one, you what. One second. I had a fashion crisis this morning. Right. So when I was 20, I used to have like my noses pierced and I wore earrings and my hair was all different colors and I dressed wild and all that. And so this morning I was like, it's pride. I'm going to put on an earring. And I tried <laughs> all different earrings. And, you know, I, my style has just moved on to another place now. It just didn't work out. So I'm wearing a pink plaid shirt. And we've got um, Stitch here with nice. pink ears. So I'm, I'm wild Cute. today. Oops. Flynn, too. Flynn's yeah. hair was every different color. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's true. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the I couldn't find the one I was looking for, but that's okay. I'm going to, I'll be, I'm, today I've got um, classic Mickey with a little green square in the back uh, yeah. there behind him. I already wore the pin one with the pink square, so yep. it'll be green today. I have Minnie Mouse oh, sending love. Very cute. Oh, look at that. Ooh, in opera oh, wow. length gloves. And she yeah. looks like she's like, she's got stern eyebrows there. She's very, what's I going on? Lashes. She, serious. She does serious look somewhat stern. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's very serious about this look. <laughs> that is great. Fashion is important. Oh, Fashion hey, important. Steve Parmley's in the chat. He's only popping in real quick. He's got to work. Please be uh, be careful at work, Steve. We love you, and we'll see yeah. you later. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so I let's see. I have one, too. I was Yay. ready today. Oh, a Monsters, <laughs> Inc. Oh, it's Boo. Oh, oh, it's Boo. That's awesome. That's uh, great. So I actually made, I made this costume for my daughter when she was... Two, three, I think about three, oh, three years that's old. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That is too one. cute. Too cute. <laughs> Anybody Blair, else? what do you got? Um, I have my third one of these. Yeah. The yes. 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 I need that so bad. <laughs> the only I reason it's not on a hat yet is because I keep getting pins where I don't know if anyone else has mm -hmm. this problem, but the spikes come through the back. Oh, oh. yes. So. I mean, obviously there's supposed to be some material in there, but I usually use them in hats, so it gets pretty thin. I find yeah. that the ones with like the rubber nubs that go on the back are a lifesaver. Yeah, I'm so, actually, well, I want to get some of I need to know those. where you got that, Blair. Oh, it's on there. This, these are the <laughs> same ones that, um, from the company that Sam was wearing on Lego Masters. Oh, sure. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, yeah. I have one of my cool. conference badges, so if you guys, have ever been to a conference? Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. there's these magnetic backed badges. And Moto, what? Moto, right. you're like a mind reader. You're ahead of your time, man. That's awesome. That's so we funny. Were, just ten minutes ago, we were talking about we're gonna do a new feature where everyone brings their con badges. 
You yep. are prescient. Yes, that's we, awesome. That's a great badge. Richard was going to do it today, and I said, no, we haven't told everybody else, and I don't want anybody to feel like they have to, like, then then the whole screen empties out as everybody it's runs really to find their content. Really? Just, but, um, <laughs> that's, that's great, awesome. Moto. That's awesome, Moto. Yeah, yeah, so coming up, we're going to do that. Like, we have so ridiculously many con badges. Like, you know, you have to edit them down. Yeah, I think, I think it would be... Um, I, but I think it would be fun to see everybody's like what everybody yeah. does with their badges because everybody does fun stuff. And actually, I was thinking we could get everybody in the chat to send in pictures of their con badges, and we could do a fun slideshow of like everybody's kooky con badge decorations. A con badge, fun. if you will. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we could also get everybody in our little tricky lug. Um, some tricky lug bricks and do it when we all add the brick to our badges. Oh, yes, Only we have okay. cool. we plans for that. So, actually. you know, Steve Parmley generously donated a bunch of one by eight bricks to tricky, uh, to tricky bricks, tricky lug, and they are at the place to be printed by our other good friend, Dan Keys. Yep. And I just haven't had Who's here five in the chat, by the way. seconds to breathe. Dan Keys is in the chat too? Yep. Dan, awesome, oh, Dan. Hi, Dan. Wow, hello. Oh, look, so, there he is. So he has them ready to print, and I have not had five seconds, despite the fact that we've been in, like, in lockdown. So, like, You've been in busy. Lockdown, I have not had like five seconds between everything else to big one. But now I'm actually happy I waited because yeah. at the time, Tricky Lug wasn't a thing yet. And so now we can actually have legit Tricky Lug bricks. And that I think rocks. that's. Unfortunately, they awesome. won't be coral because they are one by eight bricks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> coral. yeah, they are one by eight bricks. Coral would be that's would all... be awesome. One day, yes. Yeah, so one we're gonna, day, we're there gonna will have... be a special coral brick. Yes, you can do two one by fours. Thank you, awesome. Moto. Yay! And it could say core on one and owl <laughs> on the other. Dash owl on the other. Cool. Oh my goodness, I just <laughs> thought of something. Wow, fun. this is spun way out of control. Yeah. Holly, coral line. Yeah, I thought, yeah, That's coral so line. Cool. It is really? Oh yeah. dear. Wow, they, they, they do the whole house. That's pretty good. They do the whole squirrel, apartments in coral. Coral line. We'll have to, yeah, yeah the filler brick in the coral line house will have to be coral. Oh, that's <laughs> no right. kidding, right? right? It's an obvious of course. choice. That was during the ideas era, during the, our whole season on, on ideas. <laughs> well, so hey, we thought we would talk today about about storage and its partner organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or lack we, thereof. we thought that the less scary title <laughs> and its partner, like the less the less scary title for the chat today was was storage because organization sounds so scary, doesn't it? He sounded like a science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Here, I'm gonna put up some pens in my pocket. <laughs> You don't have a protector. <laughs> I tried to rock a protector, but it was too like I, it looked it was like too I was much. I was trying too hard. Yeah. <laughs> should I go get a slide? Yeah, should I go get a slide says, rule out? Orange already? team love does two one by fours. Okay, so does do coral bricks come in one by four? They yes. come in one by six. No. So we could. No. So you could put one oh, by ones tough. on either side if you want to spread the gap. Yeah, we had a whole conversation about it that you guys missed during one yeah. of the episodes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're all we're all coordinating in the chat, but oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh my yeah, goodness. We've got it sorted. Right. Well, they're they're, yeah. <laughs> they're coming one. for sure. It's a thing. <laughs> Jake Sadovich is here. Brings me so much joy. Hey, I can't Jake. Even tell you. Hey, Jake. Uh, oh my goodness. That's okay, I'm going to take okay. this thing apart here to give my hands something to do. So as far as... <laughs> Here, you could give this hand something to oh, do. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. Oh, no. I can't wait. Right? Isn't she going to become a part of, dare I say, she's going to become a major part of viewer mail? Yeah, she's already. Yeah. Not only is yeah. she going to be a part of it, but I'm working. Wait, what? You guys don't have her fully clothed. That's completely inappropriate. Oh, my goodness. Well, it, 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 it <laughs> is. Pride. 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 She's letting it all yeah. hang out, it's man. <laughs> we got to get her a tutu. Jeez. Put some Lego dots on there. She's yeah. riding on the back of that flatbed truck surrounding. <laughs> Surrounded by rainbow, <laughs> letting it all go. By unicorns. Who is it riding a unicorn we have here, too? Oh, yes. I put, um, so we had the, what happened to him? Did you clear him? No, we had that little unicorn that we made from one of the sets that we put together. Oh, yeah. 
I think it was... There we go. Oh, it was Powerpuff Girls, and then I put Baron Von Baron riding the unicorn, so that's <laughs> like my new desk Very decoration. For that's good. Right, awesome. and, and we've at least got a dots ring back. Yeah, good, so yeah, should have should have put a ring on it. On. You're, you know, you're fully dressed enough if you're wearing a dots ring. I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Depend never fully dressed depending on the dots. ring. Yes, I just went to Broadway show tune. Wow. Annie even. There you go. There's yeah. your there's your big Broadway song quote oh, for the dear. day. It is a hard clutch life for us. <laughs> it is. Oh my hey. goodness. Yeah. Okay. So does anyone have anything <laughs> so moving on. They're, moving on. that they're burning to talk about about their how they organize their collection? Well I think I brought, that yeah I so brought first some chaos. We, so first of all, I think a, a, I know a question that people always ask is that yes. definite one, like how do you organize like, when you get past a certain X amount of bricks, how do you organize them? Type. Well, everybody <laughs> has color or type. Yeah, everybody has their own methods and also like mixes mm -hmm. of methods and the, and like you know specific methods that only they use. Like I know we have some of those. Yeah. But you know what I find, and I don't want to make a sweeping general statement, but Almost every builder that I know has a box, no matter how they organize it, has a box called like weird parts that just yes. holds all of the stuff that can't. All my boxes are weird parts boxes. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I have several of those. You know, like they're just completely uncategorizable. And you yeah, I call them, I have my cool parts box right under there, so I'll, I'll disappear behind the curtain when the time's right. Oh yeah, so it's, it's the it's the yeah same same. Yeah, where it it's a category unto itself. And then, do you ever put things away? No, Matt? nice, very nice. Do you ever put bricks away? You're putting away, putting away, and you have categories for everything. And then you have about sixty three parts left on the table, each of which is its own category. Right. And you're gonna yes. run back and forth. Right. If you only have sixty three of them, you make a tiny container that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. These are these parts. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah. So right now, so what I use to um, organize my parts pretty often are those uh, trays that come out of the advent calendars, you know, that have the little small compartments. So anytime I like order a bunch of stuff from Bricklink or I'm building a big mock or something, I have I have so many of them. I guess I have I don't know eight or nine, maybe ten, ten of those all stacked up, and so I pull all those out and unstack them and use those for all those tiny little compartments for all. Uh oh, no, we lost your I audio, know. Holly. <laughs> Holly, your audio got Holly. really oh, low. No. We lost your audio. I can barely hear it. I could hear it, but it's really faint. But I have really good headphones. Yeah, we can un un spotlight. <laughs> Sorry, we put you on the spot. Yeah, no, no, we'll um, we can come back to that to that. So I guess so. Let's like on the first round, let's talk about like do you or do you organize by color? By brick type. There you go. Yeah, you're back. You're back, Holly. By color, or by brick type, or by other. something else, or something else, or a mixture of both. Okay. Cara, yeah. why don't we start with you? Um. Yes, that is how I organize. <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. Yes. Yeah. So we've got a lot of bins that are, you know. One by one bricks, one by four bricks. It's all colors in there, tiles, you know, plates, and those are pretty organized. We have an enormous yeah. bin of all the white parts. So we've got just white uh, in one bin. And then I've got a lot of other categories, like all the food bits, the yeah. technique bits, you know, um, keep oh, glow you in the dark is its own category. You have one called Technic Bits? Um, no. <laughs> I was going to be I've got, jealous. I've got, like, Technic. There's, like, the axles and the pins and the gears and stuff. And then there's a giant box of Technic. Just weird other stuff, right? <laughs> All the Technic. Yeah. Yep. So you don't have your... You don't have your... Um, sorry. You don't have your, your Technic organized separately in any way. It's all just in one giant box yeah this the small bits the the 
axles, the pins, the the gears, mm -hmm. those are yeah. in one of those little fishing tackle boxes. Yeah. Cool. The rest of it, the lever arms, the bricks, they're just in a box. Yeah. Well, you also don't have a Technic heavy collection, right? No, like, we us, don't. That would be madness. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Like I've seen your, I've seen your collection. You have a lot of matching containers that can stack next to one another nicely. We do. Here, I can take you on a tour. Oh, all right. And this is so. These are all of our. There they are. Our standard bricks, plates, tiles, everything. Very nicely organized in these sterilite containers, right? And then uh, I've got down here. I don't know if I can. See Sorry, I don't have a webcam. They're all sold out. Giant works. box of white parts. Just white. Everything white in bags. Um, and then we've got uh, the madness that is everyday Lego life. <laughs> oh, my right, goodness, yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Do you use that head for sorting? Um, no, I use the head to put things in. Yeah, we have one of those... <laughs> We have one of those it's, heads it's, in um, it. It's full sorts. of a lot of unsorted, um, largely minifig things. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty, com it's pretty common. I'm Nick says huge... wine looks very organized. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that uh, that Went to the store sorting, yesterday. That and sorting probably go nicely together. Oh, definitely. A glass of wine, sort some bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All oh, right. So thanks for sharing yes, that. I love. I'm a your... huge fan of matching containers. I know and they but... look so nice. <clears throat> oh yeah. It has By the way, we'll have, we'll have to see if Holly appears back in the green room at some point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't seen not yet. Oh, well, maybe she yeah. was having internet problems. Yes, yeah, so she, she was saying audio. In the chat. I get it. You know what I realized yep. too that we are bereft of on our table. What's that? Is bowls coffee? Oh, and um, I think it's. I think it may be coffee time over here. Wait, you oh, didn't. You didn't have move. coffee. Let's move. <laughs> let's move uh, to Blair. How do you organize your pieces? So I'm also quite a bit of a yes. Um, it's really been an interesting experience uh, across the decade point for AFOLism not too long ago. AFOLism. Um, and yeah, it's it's a serious condition. Um, and I think the other day, it was like maybe a couple weeks ago or so, somebody brought up in AFOL's Facebook the um, sorting 707. It's like an old, old lug net file. Does anybody else remember this? No. No. So, lug net? That sounds... Or uh, I'll find a away. link to it. I meant to do it before this, but I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to bring up screen sharing and all that anyway. But it talks about the evolution of your Lego collection and organizing chaos. Um, and it goes through all of these things, talking about um, starting by, I, I had some sets, and now they're in bags, and now they're in drawers in bags. And then I started to sort my bricks by color. And then I realized that was a bad idea. So I started to sort my bricks by pieces, but it um, it checks in with this person all along their ever expanding AFOL collection collection and world growing around them to the point where they get to the like I think I need a new house. Um, right, and I'm, <laughs> right. We're we're on the cusp. <laughs> yeah, and I'm somewhere in that realm. So I have stuff organized in every way imaginable, and and also chaos. Um, as a Lego educator, I also have a ton of bulk um, that's both for programming um, or for special events. So I have entire tubs full of like, these are all castle pieces and these are all like giant chunky pieces for making moon bases and spaceships. And then I have, you know, just 80 pound tubs of stuff and stuff and stuff. Um, sometimes I hit those up for pieces because I have a really good idea of what's in there because they're all curated for education. But for the most part, my the rest of my collection is like really special pieces and weird pieces organized. Um, I'm starting to get into breaking down by part um, and having my basic elements organized. I got um, four organizers when Radio Shack went out of business. My oh, friend cool. and builder, um, Connor Lill, he's another mech builder. He sh shared a post of his that he was like, oh, look what I just picked up. And it, they're like 
metal and they have these thin drawers with all these little organizers in them and they roll out on casters. Oh, like he would have gotten fuses and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. I have four of those now that I'm slowly getting filled up with all the parts. Um, but aside from that, I did grab a little bit of like the rest of the chaos to show people and some ins and outs and like do's and don'ts of um, storage boxes. Because I like to break down all of my um, specialized elements or project elements into some of the smaller openable tray boxes so that I have access to pieces on the move for moving between the studio and the house or for taking to a convention. I have yeah. all my pieces that I've been, like my palette of sorts is stored in these containers so that I can easily access the parts for projects I'm working on at the time, even though they should technically be parts organized in other places. Oh, uh, conventions uh, ruin our collection <laughs> because whatever piece we're working on, you know, let's say we we have like like 70 different parts we're using for that that thing in multiple colors each. We just dump huge amounts of all of those bricks in containers and take them to the convention. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Or let alone like I will take an entire mobile studio because I'm so close to Bricks Cascade and I'll drive down there. I have usually I have at least two tables where I filled the underneath with stuff to keep working while I'm there. Um, whether it's for a big collaborative thing or a project that just wasn't done. And the mess that's left after that of like trying to find stuff last minute and like, yeah. I mean, it was insane. But um, what I have here is a pretty good example of what that kind of looks like. So when we're talking about um, my Heartbreaker, uh, what was that, over a month ago, uh, I was mentioning having collected pink and purple for five years to do that project. So. What pink and purple looks like after years and making some projects out of it is tubs like these, which I wanted to do a little comparison with as well. And then I also have, there's more that's broken down. Into and light. translucent. It, yeah. I love translucent. Yes, so that you can see stuff. My, the one thing I learned really early on like as a young builder, as a kid, was if you're looking for stuff in a big drawer of mess, you pull the drawer out and you... You look at it like this. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you can yes. find yeah. your small pieces. <laughs> um, so some do's and don'ts. Um, do buy yourself containers with locking lids. Oh yes. Yeah. Don't. I have those exact same ones. <laughs> Don't buy the ninety-nine cent containers from IKEA because I mean they're just gonna spill all over the place. Like, and they also smell really bad. Um, whatever they're made out of leaves a, a really bad uh, VOC smell, plastic off-gassing smell inside. Yeah. And so I'm trying to transition out of these boxes, but you buy a few and then they end up full of Lego and you don't have another place to put them. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, systems grow over time. They become kind of Baroque, right? Exactly. Um, I have shelves and shelves full of this style organization. This was a... Um, fantastic plant-based yogurt that we were eating for a while until they changed it and I can't eat it anymore. Um, but we saved the containers and I have lids too, but they also stack really nicely. So you can be like, well, these are my tiny bits and these are my medium bits and these are apparently doors or something. Um, but this was all some stuff I kind of put together when I was customizing uh, Diva's Mecca. So I had a bunch of like alternate windshields I was trying out and different pink and purple pieces. Um, and then, this one, the last one from the pink and purple, this is actually another per wonderful example of upcycling. Um, these are containers from my very first LEGO convention in 2009. These were raffle containers. I think this one says Ferrari F1, it's the 8157 set. And these were little raffle boxes that somebody had made. And then at the end, I was like, well, don't throw those away because, like, I can put Lego in those. So yeah. I took them and I still have them. And it's also a fond memory because, like, it's a great container. They're stackable. And every time I look at them, I think that's where it all really started. So um, <laughs> upcycling some of the translucent stuff, tra the transparent containers that you have in your own home is a great way to start the sorting process, especially with, like, the stacked cups method because it allows you to quickly break things down and be like, okay, these all go in this cup and these go in this cup. And like, it's basically you're drafting, but for yourself, like a lot of people when they draft sets with, for people who don't know that, like what that is, when you break down a set and you take each individual element and you part them out, 
multiple, multiple people buy the set so that you have tons of those elements and then you go around and, and everybody takes cups one at a time. A draft. Um, exactly, it's a draft. So you're doing the same thing at home when you're sorting. So I use the same method, basically just have a ton of cups and then I can stack them. Um, and then you, you know can that leave them last like that container. As long as I didn't mean to Say interrupt. What? I'm sorry. That last container points to a problem that I have, and and what leads to my weird parts collections. And that is, there are some parts that take up a lot of space, and you can only fit like eight of them in a. Like, how about castle tops? You All know? in a big castle bin. It's a big Tupper like Tupperware, Rubbermaid, or something. The yeah. big chunky ones definitely have to go in their own bin. And I love those parts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he uses big, bubbly, organic shapes all the time. So it's it's one of those things where, yeah, you, and bag them if they're in good condition. Obviously, like, you individually wrap them and yeah. then stick them in there. You don't want windshields all banged up. All um, scratched up. There were Mark is people. here. Mark is here. Yeah, Mark, Mark is in the hey, chat. Hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, and then I brought some of these. Like, so these are what I like to use for my on-the-fly projects. Um, oh yeah, love those. Like, special Car, bits. you use those, right? Some of yours yep. are like tackle boxes. Yep. I, yeah, for all the small bits, the the food items, uh, minifig accessories. You know, glow in the dark. I got this older right. one. I went to a, like a Lego yard sale. Look at that; it's all finger hinges. Oh, we have some. Of, we have two kinds of those, and one kind, if you turn the case sideways, dumps all the pieces together, and the yeah. other kind, you turn it sideways, and it never does. Yep. That's what I was going to show actually is the difference between new and old style. So when you're looking at containers, you can see some of them have these grooves and lips that line up with your individual yeah. slots, yep. and the other ones don't. So if this bows at all. If this gets turned over, this is not like a jewelry parts organizing container. This yeah. is larger craft parts that won't mix. But for the smaller stuff, you have to have the really intense ones or individually yeah. locking compartments for your so your Lego dots tiles don't get all mixed up. Yeah, so. we do that. <laughs> we do that for Technic too, like bushings and all those little teensy bits. Yeah, it's essential. And then the last thing um, is that I have a couple of these. Oh yeah, I'm so yeah, jealous. They're does. so butch, Blair. Yeah, I have something pretty. <laughs> They're really nice because they that. stack, um, and they oh, also no. individually compartmentalize for none of your. Sorry, that's really loud, but none of your stuff's gonna mix together, you know. Yeah, and they're rugged for conventions too. So when you're lugging a bunch of stuff across the convention floor in those wagons. <laughs> You're not overflowing. Hey, who uses those wagons? Anyone here? Oh, those little foldable <laughs> garden all? wagons. Yeah. That for anyone who doesn't use it, you go to your first, <clears throat> you know, place you're taking things. And I know it may be a little while till we're going to conventions, but we learned about that our first year. We saw several people with them, and we were just we had so much stuff to carry. Those foldable garden carts that are cloth yeah. and wheels and frames are just awesome. I know. I actually used that cart for the first time. It's like, it, I think mine's called like a beach wagon or something. And it's the first mm -hmm. time this weekend I actually used it for its intended purpose, which was kind of novel. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah you can find them. Yeah, you can find them. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're called beach wagons. Or if you go to a garden center, you can find beefier ones. Um, yeah, depending on how much like uh, weight, yeah, weight you need to carry. Mm -hmm. We actually had a period where I don't think we have too much Lego. I think we're one room shy. Right, we just need one more room. So in our dining room, which we is now need studio, another room. We yeah, would... we all need another room. There's a, no matter how many rooms you have. <laughs> yeah, we I'm, I'm probably the only person on the panel who has enough room. Oh, you're lucky. Well, yeah. that's good. We're coming to yeah, stay at it, your house, Modo. It, but it's yourself. It's because I have a barn. I mean, this is this is what it's led to, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's our dream place has a barn. So our solution oh, yeah. for a while was that we had our garden cart full of boxes of Lego, and whenever we would have a dinner party, we would roll the garden <laughs> carts back to the bedroom, the bedroom, have the dinner party, and then we could build again the next day. And now since there, we're not having dinner parties, it's all Lego all the time room. I know. <laughs> um, it, it's actually a multi-purpose room. It serves many purposes. Um, 
yeah. office, classroom, TV studio. Yeah, we were just talking about that. <laughs> Madness. So, um, uh, oh, I did, real quick, um, I do want to ask you, Holly, about yours, but I, there's an interesting question from, um, from Kim in the chat, and she says, at what point did you start sorting your bricks? And I think, <laughs> like, I think, well, I think they mean, I think she means, like, at what point did you um, have enough that you felt like you had to have them organized in some way, if I get the question mm -hmm. correctly. Gosh, well, I don't even remember. I, I know, I know, like, for the longest time, I would just build sets, and so I didn't really have, like, that surplus of miscellaneous mm -hmm. part, probably when I had kids. So once I had kids and started getting just kind of more, like, random parts just for them to build with was when I realized pretty quickly that we needed we needed an organization system just so it wasn't messy. Yeah. Well, when we stayed at your place, I saw a couple of organization systems. You had your your bricks were organized one way, and um, other bricks were organized another way. And then there was the Duplo that I was so envious of the giant Duplo collection. Yeah. No, I have I have a plethora of storage systems. So I think it's a pretty typical thing for A falls, just like Blair was showing his kind of miscellaneous types of bins and stuff. It's like you start with one thing and then you either find that you find something that works better or you outgrow it or, you know, you want to repurpose something. Um, and so you end up with like this for, and, you know, and the, the biggest challenge that I have found in general with, with trying to like store and organize Lego is, is we consistency. Got Consistency seems to be the biggest issue because you find you think you found one system that works, but but having it scale is typically where it yeah. tends to fall apart. Yes, we got. <laughs> we yeah. actually we had look our our special cue clock here oh, told right. us, <laughs> and the and the, and the chat. You never you, yeah. it never you know they will not let they will not let us forget, which is awesome. You but ready yeah, there, oh, hang on. Yeah, I gotta do the I gotta do the fancy thing here. All right, here we She's go, everybody. Way, it's about that time. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Yeah, come on, what up? It's okay. Good. All right, yeah. Logan. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Yay, look at Multiple oh. cookie time. Skittles got groomed. <laughs> It's your friend oh, Skittles. Skittles. Right. Skittles did get groomed. I was gonna say, is that Skittles? It's Skittles. Nice, Cara. Oh, got a haircut. Can, can you catch? Good boy. Oh, nice, nice. And Otto lost his internet. Our oh, sound okay. of happiness. Oh no. I can get it. No, no. There we go. That makes All me right. so happy. All right, hooray, Logan. <laughs> Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> awesome. A Wookiee on a mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> what do mammoths even eat? Like gummy bears? I don't, <laughs> I don't know yeah. what mammoths eat. I guess grass. I, I oh, expect I none of us bears. do, really. Hey, so we started organizing because this is the way I am. I have a thing about containers. I love containers, containers, containers. We started organizing immediately and we got these cutest little drawers. They were about this big like and it was paper clips three drawers and we had about like 50 pieces and they were in there and they were so cute. And then, you know, then he bought me 20 pounds of bulk. <laughs> <laughs> so we pretty much started organizing right away. Yeah. But Holly, so how do you organize uh, your your bricks as far as like color, piece, all of the above? Um, definitely by type first, and then if I if space will allow, then I go with color. Um, and I find that seventy five percent of it is just like miscellaneous at this point. I have a lot of <laughs> I have so many bins and bags of unsorted brick that it's not really even sorted anymore. But uh, if when I get down to sorting, um, do you want me to show you around a little bit? Sure. You have, yeah. okay. you have great storage for storage containers. Okay. Let's see. That's why I switched the iPad. So I can just give you guys a tour. So this is like our lounge area. This is where my kid plays. So I've got IKEA storage kind of up under his table. 
And then we use a lot of um, trays, trays and containers here. Nice. So he can pull stuff out from underneath here. And then I'll take you guys over to the storage, the actual storage area. And never mind the construction. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> oh, we're so, so this is my, um, my kind of homemade, homebrew, like, pick a brick wall. I'm obsessed with this. Wow. Yes, we love this. <laughs> yeah, I have, and that's a wine I have rack? I'm still working on the lighting system because I want to have it backlit. But um, so it's just like if you go to the, to the wall. Well, it's by type. So um, the colors are, you know, all mixed up. But there, you know, I know where all my one by two tiles are. Remy Breaker, I, I agree with you. Um, so that's like, that's double sided. So that has um, more on the other side. So they fit back to back. Awesome. And that's on wheels too? Um, it's not, but it moves. It, you know, it's got like- Oh, easily feet, movable. So it's, easily it's movable. It's pretty easily movable. Yeah. And then this was actually, these were some, my original storage containers. So this is like where I started when I thought this was sufficient. <laughs> Um, and it grew from there. Remember um, the good so, yeah, old now, days when it all fit in there? Yeah, I don't know that it ever fit, fit in there, but I was, <laughs> I, yeah, I was naive. Um, and then over here is where I have more of like my kind of the miscellaneous um, small part um, storage where it's like I don't have enough to fill a cup, but I have enough to fill, you know, enough to fill drawers. Basically. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Um, and there's kind of like, I have sort of like half of it is like all new parts uh, as I'm getting them, like either ordering them new or finding them off the pick a brick wall. And Marilyn then Carly, I agree. Yeah. And the other half is like, um, like used parts that I've just had. Wait, wait, for like what's forever that? What's that pink thing? What? <laughs> what's that? The original? That you just kind of flew over. Yeah, right there. <laughs> it's the no actual it. one. Uh, so and then I use a ton of these because uh, those are like the cheap IKEA, you know, Tupperware or whatever that kind of stacks and then, you know, just kind of temporary. Let's put it in here for now. It's like a quasi storage system. And then my really crap like Technic. <laughs> storage system right now so those are like um, the little boxes that's we what started we started with. yeah the, the ones on the left yeah. the ones on the left yeah, is our very first tiny. thing everything yeah. fit in those three little boxes so oh my gosh the little like... ones nothing fits in there are you crazy well, we, like, we, we had, had like five, five one by one plates oh, like, funny. Well, we had like the leftovers from one kit yeah basically. it wasn't much yeah and then down below is where i have like my bigger bins and stuff here and that's um, Ikea as well, right? That is Ikea as well. So I, I kind of had to mod these together because I like to bring everything up to um, counter height, like standing height. So I had to, yeah, modify and adjust these a little bit so to, to get to stack them on top of each other. Um, but then that, that allows you to store, let's see, yeah. like, for instance, if I pull out green bin, and then you can kind of see that that gets, like, that's like a landscaping, landscaping bin. Got it. Yeah, and, and then this is a pretty handy thing. So over here is kind of my my build table, which I'm having to double. Uh, oh, and double there's up Susan. Like, there's Susan. Hi, Susan. Yay. Yeah. Um, so I'm using this for uh, work right now. So I've got like a Cintiq that I have on an arm. I can push out of the way for build space. And like right now, it's all about getting everything sort of modular. Sorry. So I have a little cart that pulls out here on wheels. Ooh. And so I have office stuff, but then I also have like brick, of course. So double duty. <laughs> nice. So if this is Holly being 75% not organized, <laughs> mine is about 243%. Oh not my goodness. I know. I'm yeah. just hanging my head in shame. You know, I've no. seen it live and I'm still ashamed. Yeah, Holly, and then really like where I hang out is it's like a pullout couch and stuff. So eight balls get to come visit and sleep over and it's lots of fun. Yes, we enjoy, we enjoyed our visit. Well, Holly, your system makes me think of something that I've seen in ours. And, and I wonder if everyone's sort of this way to a degree is we started with small containers, but you know, when you outgrow that, then you go into a bigger one and that frees exactly. up the small container. So you're always going into bigger and bigger containers with your things. So yeah. we're actually in a place now where we have scaled containers that all fit together. Yes. You yes. know, like, mm -hmm. can we, should we show ours? Yeah, we can show ours. Let me get, um, wait, can I, I interrupt? 
Oh, yeah, so there was a good, good question in the chat a little while ago, and I was wondering too, Holly, in your little pick a brick system, have you ever knocked the lids off? Nope, I make sure that, that they're really tight. I mean, I anticipate that's going to happen at some point, but you know, I knock stuff over so frequently. Well, I had one of my, one of my, you know, I, it's just part of like Lego life, right? Like you get used to picking up tiny pieces off the floor. Oh, like yeah. I, I had a tray that slid off of my table last night and just, you know, burst everywhere. And I was uh, like, oh yeah, of course that would happen. Yep. Yeah, but they don't. I just make they can make a pretty um, satisfying like clicking sound when you when you push the top on, so you know that they're on there. I'm worried my I find that my kids don't put them on very securely. Oh yeah. Got it. So I sort of check them. I have the habit of every time I go to pull on the lid, I kind of just give it a little. You know, like I I just I'm careful about it. <laughs> you get that instinct after a while. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I just yelled at them that other day because there were like six cups I pulled out where the lids were not tight. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hey, Got the magic touch. I just found this is totally beside the point. This is out of left field, but I just found a new connection that I never found before. Will you spotlight us for a second? Um, yes. It's so weird when you're the host, you have to go through all of these like, yes, I know that the host has spotlighted my video for everyone because I'm the host, oh, no. you stupid okay. program. So these are wrenches, right? Just wrenches. Yeah, wrench to wrench. Check it out. I've never done that yep. before. Yeah. And so that means that anything a wrench fits in, that post mm -hmm. fits in any hole, you can put back to back that way. Very nice. Very fancy. Sorry, maybe everyone knows that one. So how about yeah, this cool. one? What if I bring Sorry. you the history of our collection here? And the history? About... That's going to be a we'll lot make, of breaks. Well, we'll, but, make, we'll make it easy. Well, let's real quick, let's show what's back here. This is our most updated, like, organized part of our collection. Um, so we have this rolling build table, which basically has just turned into a backdrop for the show. <laughs> but it raises up and down. But it, yeah, it does. It cranks up and down, which is awesome uh, for a work table. Um, and then we have, so you can see I have a, um, I sort of have I, a, an Ikea, a, like a roll of um, seamless here for when I do the reviews and stuff. But this is basically an Ikea bookcase and then we use um, Sterilite, Sterilite is what we use. So they all stack together, they all work, and then you can see kind of down there, that's our minifig storage uh, using those, I know we've shown them before, but those um, sort of suitcases that you can get from uh to where did we get a michael's and they and then they have all the other little sort of containers inside of them which is a we started great way these. this was our first thing was shoe boxes and we've never used the lids on them we always just stack box inside i the know box. blair will be horrified well we but... <laughs> we're trying to move away from this because you always have to pull them out and unstack them yeah. and restack them but honestly that's not us being lazy that is like the only way that we can fit everything because yeah. if we put lids on it on all of those boxes we could only we would only have storage for maybe a quarter of them but by being able to like especially if they're not all the way full by able Just with creative yeah. stacking you can fit at least like four <laughs> times the boxes so that's kind of why we yeah. do that i do that with my pick a brick cups like i find that i you know because sometimes i only have like a quarter of my pick a brick cups filled and so i tend to, I, I don't know if you saw that stack over there on my on my little wall there but yeah, yeah I have a huge stack where they're just kind of all nested inside each other so we went um so one of the things that i got from um from teaching my classes and i talked about this we actually talked about this when we did our in the tech um, our technic how-to class but um, if you are going to be doing any kind of work with Technic at all, having your small Technic parts um, organized is so incredibly important. Um, and we used to just kind of have them all laying around, and then well, we, we took a cue. System, right? We took a cue from my um, from my job where we have every where everything is like completely organized. And I did, um, so this, this was... This is what we used to do. And we, yeah. we, for some, for larger things now, we have these stacking divided containers. All right, so there's divided, there's divided ones, and then there's sort of like plain ones. We keep a lot of the bigger stuff in that. And then we um, completely organized our, all of our pins into, well, 
Yeah, we organized all of our pins into little divided containers so all the types of pins are together. We do the same thing with axles. That's a really important one is to divide up your axles so that you know what size is where you need them because it's a pain in the butt otherwise. <laughs> Moto. Moto. Um, and then we use a lot of these, um, these Sterilite divided boxes and again they're great because they all sort of um they stack on top of each other and there's lots of room in here and what i do like about these is they come um can you grab one that has the long pieces the long in it too? Trays, yeah so it comes each one comes, oh my god Flynn, i have the exact same ones yeah so each funny. one comes with me too <laughs> well, yeah, i know they're pretty i guess they're pretty popular they um but this one is the one sorry i'm trying to our light keeps getting all funky because it's on some kind of auto brightening oh sorry about ridiculousness that. um Here. so yeah so it comes each one comes with one of these inside and then two of the single like just one whole open row and i find that we um, we mix and match those a lot so we'll have ones that have all four just the long ones in it and then we'll so it's nice to be able to when you have a bunch of them to mix, mix and match and i'll tell you if you like these, you can. They are. Um, you can't get them at Target, but what I discovered is you can order them on Amazon. In like, you can buy like a box of five, like what they come in in the cardboard box, and they end up costing like a quarter of what they cost to buy them individually. Um, so if you know you need a lot, um, or maybe you could need to split with somebody, we just order ones you know, five, or, five or six at a time. Sorry. So I then we have, you, like, with... That's why you get locking lids. lids. There you go. And, right, and so, like, Blair, you were using these, right? We made yeah. a purchase recently where we got two sizes of these and then two sizes of these, and our IKEA bookcase fits them in various combinations, and we can yeah. really outgrow this, then it goes in here and something else goes in the smaller one and everything everything fits really nicely these are you know these yeah are holly the holly has the same thing going on it looks like <laughs> yeah so yeah funny. there you go yeah. yeah so these are the these are the ones we like and i mean it's just because it's the ones we started with oh. <laughs> you know it's one of those like we already went down the sterilite road so you yes. might as well just kind of keep going uh, mm -hmm. with every and you know like i said they all stack and yeah. and fit Oops. together so um yeah, that's here's, our storage solution. Here's my last huge tip. I used to be a sea kayaker. I did a lot of sea kayaking, and I did photography when I did it. And I would always have a pelican case bungee corded on the front of the kayak. We'd go to Alaska and just be in all these crazy situations, right? And the camera was in there, so I would open it up when I was in still water and then take the camera out. And the rule was every time I closed it, I had to close at least one latch of the two. Every, 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 every single time. And the same is true with these. Because if we make a stack, we're building, and we've got six of these high, and then it's leaning over and all that, then, you know, disaster. But if they're closed, then no disaster. Right. Well, I think, and you have to have had like a situation where you dumped out a whole container of small things, right? Oh. Wait, you mean like yesterday? Yeah, Frequently. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. It, happens all it the time. seems to happen a lot when it's about 3 a.m., a couple nights before a convention. Oh, yeah. You yeah. drop all your Technic pins. Yeah. You're yeah. Only when you're in a hurry. I'm well, the only exception to the rule, I think. That's just because I have a different method of storing. Ooh, oh, it's well, time for Moto. Yeah, I think it's I think time it's for time. Moto. And I'll just say real quick before um, we, we hand this over to Moto is our, um, as far as like color and type, we do the same thing. Like we mostly have them divided up by type. Um, we have some special colors that we kind of keep like, like coral, pink, purple, coral. coral. Um, you know, those types of co like uh, medium azure, like ones that we really like and, and are unusual we keep together. And then we do a lot of um, we do a lot of sorting by color families. So I know like um, Holly, you showed your um, your tiles, the way you have like all your one by two tiles. And the way we do tiles is we have them divided up in like and we do this also too with our one by um, one by n plates, is we divide them up 
in color families. So like here's all of my earth tone tiles. So tan, brown, olive green, like anything that would be like earthy or natural goes there. And then we have like all black and white tiles in one. And that's something too, like if you're, if you don't have, you know, like black and white go great together in a <laughs> bin because you can tell them apart super easily. Easier than two different blues. Yeah, the blues can be a little difficult. <laughs> I'll definitely say that. Well, because there's a zillion Lego blues, right? Yeah, there are. <laughs> okay, yeah, anywho, I think this is, that's, yeah, so that's how we do that. And then if we do anything where we get like a bunch of a certain part that's too awkward to store anywhere, we put it, ah. um, you know, it gets its own area. Yeah, here's a good example, actually, of I, I kind of doing the same thing, where I have like the grayscale and then I have <clears throat> colors. So do the same thing. It's just, it, it, it gets to be kind of granular, right? Like depending on how many parts you get, it's like, it starts with, it only takes up one container, then you feel like you can divide it into two or you can divide it into three and then you just figure out like how you can group it. I do, yeah, I do exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah I have like four groupings of classic space parts now, just like different tubs. Got to keep all the transparent, translucent yellow away from anything else so it doesn't get more scratched up. But, you know, you've got your blues, grays, and yellows together. Uh, I love organizing stuff in that way. I think that the, the organic way that I build and my organic, slightly chaotic organization system, they work well together because mm -hmm. as much as I, I dream of my own perfect brick pit, that so much of my process has come from finding things on my way to find the other thing. Yeah. yeah. That I don't think I can ever leave that behind. Um, and I love, you know, if I'm in the middle of a project or if I'm in a creative rut, like just looking at bulk, especially like foreign bulk is so inspiring. So like while having perfect organization on one end is key for speed, precision and finishing things, I think that the chaos and that introducing yourself to new elements or having elements pass by your field of vision while you're in a creative space yeah, yeah. Um, is super, it's important too. Yeah, I never even have to worry about it because my, my kid is in here so frequently. Like I can't, I can't put, he pulls stuff out faster than I can put it away. So it's sort of the bane of my existence, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, back to a good example, I end up with, you know, that's why I end up with these trays of parts yeah. of things oh, that are either the being, trays. yeah, I mean, they're either being disassembled or it's parts that, you know, he's come in here and ransacked and I just haven't had a chance to put away. And then I find that, you know, kind of like, kind of like you were saying, sometimes when I come in here to build stuff, I almost start there because that's where, you know, he comes in and gets all the good parts. So right. all, the good, all the good stuff is already out. Well, <laughs> that is a, that's a funny thing that I discovered about our jumble. Like we'll go through, if we don't have any other things, we'll go through the jumble, right? But the jumble is made up of the pieces that we've already selected and built other things with. So they're already like That's a self-selected. They're the parts like. we really like. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm. Um, so I noticed somebody, or actually several people in the chat, and we lost Moto as just as we were about to I know. get the yeah. like insight of the Moto method. We were going to get some Lego motivation. storage motivation, um, but. <laughs> sorry. Yes, what's going on, um, Evelyn? No, sorry. Uh, we were going to get some motivation, but um, somebody's talking in the chat about Ziploc bags, and I know that we are all, they are like the blessing and the curse of the Lego hobby, the Ziploc bag. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we have, I mean, like we have a bag of Ziploc bags, like that's how, like, and a Same. large one, like it's a big bag of yep. bags. Um, reuse, bag. reuse, recycle. <laughs> but thing. they are I, I right will say there. Bag of bags. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. <laughs> they um, and but what's great about them is they are they are good for subdividing certain things. So like I do like dark red is a subdivision in our collection. Like dark red yeah. has its own. But if I'm gonna if I get like lug bulk or I go to the wall and I get like a cup full of dark red snot pieces, well then it's likely I'm gonna dump those into a, a Ziploc bag well, and then put that bag into here, the box. That's a perfect example where we separated things out and we didn't want to jumble them again. Yeah, and then so they're in the same bin. Yeah, so but... that's all the all of our clips are in one bin. But I ha we have some of the ones separated that we bought that we bought in bulk. 
because otherwise it kind of it threatens to overrun whatever else is in the box and then it's like all i have is dark red snot pieces and i can't find anything else yeah that's what that's why i have the um I finally got enough containers where if there is like enough of one thing, then I move it into its own little smaller compartment. Um, the challenge I'm facing now is how to label all of them. Yeah. So I've got a couple of, I've got a couple of different ideas. And my, my, my next idea, what I think I'm going to try, um, so same thing with my picker brick cups. Like it's, it's actually sort of hard sometimes to tell what's in there unless you actually pull the cup out. So at all my compartments and all my cups really need like a good labeling system. And I've thrown around a lot of ideas. And I think what I might try to do, um, just so it's somewhat modular, is I think I might use command strips. I think I'm going to cut up little bits of command strips and stick plates to each of the compartments and the cups and stick the, the identifying parts to the plates so then I can kind of yeah. move them around if That's I need to. That's how they do it at Legoland. That's yeah, how they do it at Legoland. Do they really? Yeah. Also, it get a get a roll language. of just the tape, so you don't use the the hooks, right? Just get just the tape. That's what this is. Back. Okay. That's what this is. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Just... I thought I, I saw the picture of the hooks, and I was like, you don't yeah. want to be wasting. No, 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 no. It's no, just it, it's just the... it's like an assortment of yep. tapes, and I and I figure I can cut them up to go a pretty long way because you only need a little bit to go on the back of a of a plate. That way, it doesn't damage the plate. It's not permanent. It's easy to move around or remove. So that's. We're going to roll with that idea and see how, well, see how that goes. What I heard, I don't know if it was Ilya told us this or someone told us this, that in a room full of designers that all speak a different language, if you've got the piece there, it doesn't matter because everyone can recognize the piece. And I think the Mythbusters do the same thing. Jamie Heineman organizes or, or did organize his shop with like just a sample of whatever it was on the front of every bin. Yeah, I don't want to deal with labels. Like I've seen a lot of people that use uh, those little tape tape That's labels. That's what we use. We have them everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I can. I don't think I can process things quickly enough to have to read labels. Like I just process so much faster with the little visual markers. And you know, these are really cool. Um, back to that original. One of these original containers I had. Um, these were so neat. I wish Lego would make more oh, nice. storage oh, containers what? because those just slide in there and then they have they came with these like cool little dividers and stuff um, i just learned a thing because we have one of those we have drawers. one of those <laughs> i just need a ton i just need a ton of those but of course well you know uh, if you were to buy them from lego they were, they were I mean, so I think the only, like, as yeah. far as our organization systems goes i think that would be very difficult only because of like like again like we often do things in color families so, you know, just having a, a one by n plate on the front isn't going to tell me as much as just knowing earth plates, which is how I, how I name them. You I know. mean, like, unless you were using the same marker for each one, like if you used a tile or whatever part is most common in, in the variety of colors, if you had a tile in every compartment and it was just a different color tile, then you would know it's a color marker. Right. Well, we're in deep now I'm not as with bad. our labels. Yeah, we have all of our... <laughs> we're in pretty deep. Yeah, I don't think that would work for me. It's no, too, I it's, Because your... there's too many. There's just too many compartments and stuff. And I, it's, I, it's just I don't too much, to Skittles. It's too much. No, it's I too much. It's <laughs> <laughs> I find the labels are good for your um, your bins that aren't transparent that have your other categories of stuff though. Yeah, yeah that's that's this true. Is your I have stuff. Of... This is your favorite pieces. I have robots. Yeah, I have I have boxes that are labeled. So if I have a box box of like sets or something like it's all elves stuff or elves, you know, pieces or something, then I do have bins and boxes that are yeah. that do have labels on them. But yeah, not think... for small small storage. I don't know if any of you have seen Tyler live stream, but he's got a huge yep. wall of drawers behind him on on like two walls. Well, I mean, he also, you know, he makes he built that's his job. Like he right. his job for yeah, exactly. Yeah. So right. yeah, keep in mind, guys, this is a hobby for all of us. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 true. Yeah. So um, okay. So here we he's back. <laughs> Moto is back, and we are now going to hear the motivational story of Moto's organization system. So, uh, Moto, uh, take it away. Yeah, I'd fr sure, I'd phrase it as my storage system is designed to be incredibly cheap for anybody who's beginning to get into the hobby. So 
I do a lot of things that against the grain. So I do a lot of stuff and I'd advocate not to do it this way, perhaps. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't so do most, what I'm doing, kids. Yeah, don't do what I'm doing. So Blair talked about what the first choice is, do you sort by color, do you sort by type? Um, yes. I, because all of my collection was not from sets, it was from thrift store donations. In order to recreate the set, the manuals were by color and then the piece. So I sorted by color first and then piece breakdown, which is exactly the opposite of what most people oh, do. Oh, yeah. Um, it is. It is. It's against the grain. So what I do now is I sort half by type and then half by color and then type. So when I have, when I dump out a huge pile of stuff across a bed sheet, um, it's usually like tires go in one pile, figs, fig accessories, animals, those are kind of all in their piles, translucent pieces go into a pile. Um, I'd say anything that's large architectural elements goes in a pile, large vehicle elements go in a pile. Uh, Technic and the Technic connectors are a pile, Bionicle, construction is a pile. But once I get down to standard system, um, it's bricks and then, it, first of all, it's by color and then that color gets subdivided into general brick, modified brick, plates, and then everything else. So one example of that- All by, what, all by type. Exactly, but it's only because I have such a massive quantity that I can pull that off. If this isn't going to work, if you have a lower quantity situation, it's it's when you start to get, you know, I have like um, twelve, maybe no more, fifteen, maybe fifteen or sixteen of these sixty-six quart sterilite containers, and they're completely packed to the top. Damn. Um, so when you start to get to that kind of ridiculousness, and you need a fall, small footprint, that's where it comes in. But Bill Ward was talking about red, so I pulled red. Uh, you guys were talking about translucent, so I pulled translucent. But I don't label anything. So the first thing I do is I always use clear containers. I can easily see if there's translucent in here, so I know that this is my translucent container. And then, like Blair was saying, um, you know, I've got like all the smoky, dark stuff in here. I can quite easily see, oh, that's the piece I need. And then I unlock it, grab the piece, and zip it back up. Huh. Now, the problem is it, it slows you down. The opening and closing of stuff will slow you down versus a tray. Yep. Um, but I'm not, I'm not building, I'm not like a speed builder by any stretch, so I just, yeah. <laughs> I just kind of do it. Um, Can I ask you to my... take a step back for a second, Moto? <sighs> oh, no, I meant um, a, a metaphorical step back. Oh, I, meant, oh sorry. <laughs> I, thought, I physically thought you wanted to look at something. Oh, sure. yeah, I want, I, just when you stepped back, I, I saw the the ro the egg rocket, the and that's creature. why I said, ah, and then little hearts oh. came out over my head because I love it okay. so much. Yeah, I brought it back for an interview I did this week or last week. So the metaphorical um, step back here is as mm -hmm. you were calmly laying out that you separate your minifigures, and your wheels, and your architectural pieces, and your Technic. You put all of your Technic, Moto, who built that thing right behind you, puts all of his Technic in one pile? When I'm sorting Sorted first. Yeah, so when I have like first thrift store sorting. Lego, yes, it's I like would sort triage. it manually. <laughs> but no, if you're, if you're operating it, so if you're operating at that scale, you're gonna get, you're gonna get in a situation where, um, that's a bag, right? So it's like, there's a bag of 15s and then there's like, there's a, you know, each each length of size, I have to have, you know, an insane quantity of, yeah. of bricks. And so that, did, I, I'm just trying to say that, that's where it goes off the rails. This is not a reasonable quantity for me. You don't say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're talking about stuff like that, that didn't come from thrift stores, right? Like no, those are, no, it was a custom targeted. order from Germany. And yeah. you wait the three or four weeks for it to go through customs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the, the large scale builds that I'm doing now, um, if you need quantity of, of pieces in the hundreds, you know, you're talking, Someone's like parted out 20 of the Lieberherr sets. And so they have like 100, 150, 200 parts. And you, you have to, you know, you have to work a budget and there's logistics and all sorts of stuff involved. Well, and my point in, in pointing that out, other than just like, you seem to be very organized. Um, Extremely. Sort of, well, sort of, yeah, I mean, in a way. Is how large projects can overwhelm a system. 
that otherwise is like yeah. perfectly organized. And then suddenly you have 1500 of one piece. And then so you sequester mm. that 1500 of one piece and then a year goes by and you forget like, do I even have that? Cause it's not part of your normal system. Yeah, that's why, so I do, so someone's talking, we were talking about Ziploc bags. So I do a Ziploc bag method and that's the reason why is, um, so for red, so red is not a, a thing I store a lot of. This was just all my thrift store stuff, except for a couple of picker bricks. Um, so like this is all of the two by plates and they all go into a one gallon bag. And then each individual, um, you know, those are all the two by fours, for example. And I built on a theme color. So when I do a mock, um, I'm not, so, what makes me so unusual is because I'm a model maker and I don't do like landscape or rock work. Yeah. I can constrain my palette to one base color. And then once I have the base color down, I just come in with the highlight colors. So I can exclusively, for example, build in white and then do a color swap at the end or, or substitute gray in if I get stuck. Well, I'm so um, jealous of your color yeah. control technique. That's something I aspire to. Um, yeah, that's why my stuff is color controlled. Is because I'm, I forced myself to do that by sorting by color. Is, is there's no other? Yeah. There's kind of no other way. And I'm trying to show someone like a greeble. So what I do is the, the other thing that I, I like to be efficient. And the, okay, there we go. Finally, so everybody gets down to the end where there's a million little itty bitty bajillion pieces. Yeah. Right. So instead of taking the time to sort those individually out, I dump them in a bag and I don't label the bags because once again, they're clear. I just tumble the bag and then I go, oh, there's the piece. And then I unzip it, reach and grab uh, it. Uh, where, where like what we do is we take it into the living room and put a blanket, hopefully not covered with yeah. dog hair, a fresh clean blanket on yeah. the floor and pour it all out. So that's very time intensive. It is very time intensive to sort it. And, and my standard is I don't sub sort into another category until it's taking me 15 or more seconds to find the piece I'm looking for. Got it. Right? So I, I use something similar for, for stuff like that or when I'm working with a, a color coordinated build, I'll hit up my bag of black parts and if I can see it in there, yeah, I grab it, but I, I'll do something similar to what you were saying, Richard, and dump it out on a white sheet, like one piece deep, if I really need to start scouring for pieces. Th that's how yeah. I find an individual piece, is I almost always, whether it's a drawer or whatever, mm -hmm. if it's more than a couple layers deep, I dump it out. Yeah, and yeah. that's why I work on a bed sheet, is I always, the bed sheet contains the skittering motion, but also... Yeah. You can pull the corners up of a bed sheet and immediately it pulls together into a clump that you can just dump back in the bag very quickly, zip it. Yeah. So my, yeah, my rule of thumb is I surround myself with bags and then the bags are open as I build and I go depending on the mechanism of attachment. So that's another thing I do is I've started to sort by the method of attachment. So for example, I wanted to show you guys like, so you guys all have these containers. I'm just cheap. So I went to Lowe's and these are 10 bucks. What? Yeah, That's Lowe's Home great. Improvement. Look, and those have those locking lids, so they're not going to dump out sideways. I want them. That's 10 bucks. So they're, yeah, they were... That's less working parts, so it looks like they cut the cost a lot. Yeah, so what you do is there, there's uh, dividers that you can add in, and they give you like six, but they never give you enough, so I put cardboard in and tape them permanently. Yeah. But yeah, it's the same concept you guys are working with. It's just, you know, home improvement, uh, talking about like home improvement or, yeah, home improvement or machine shops are always cheaper than the storage container stores. Yeah, here's mine. It's like a double-sided one too. Have you seen, you guys use these? Oh. Yeah, yeah. And oh. then the and these parts, are, yeah. it's similar to those, um, <laughs> it's similar to those other blue ones for the... But I like the, these because they're designed to, they're designed to nest and lock so they won't slide. Well, cups come out. I like yeah. that. I like both of those, Holly and Moto. Yeah. And again, um, it just points to how essential it is to close your containers every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I triple check them. So yeah, now I will. Once really, the, having the handles really is nice for going to conventions. Mm. Yeah, there were there were two things I want to mention. So I'm starting to sort by uh, connection methods. So these are all of my oh, yeah, bar yeah. elements. So clip and bar is a mechanism of attachment. So I've started to put all the clip and bar. So if I'm doing a clip and bar build, I have those. And then I've we got- that. Yeah, we do that too. And I've got the snot drawer, which is all uh, brackets and 
you know, the stop pieces headlight bricks. Apollo studs just because, because that's just something, but. We do that. Um, oh yeah, actually, yeah. Moto, we have a question in the chat about how big are those? What's the dimensions of those little storage drawer things? Approximately. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> While he gets that, Bill Ward um, has a really interesting solution to get are... those parts back in the bag is using one of those like at a fast food joint, the, the French fry. Ooh, yeah, yeah. that's good. Ooh. That's yeah. a great, uh, I've, I've tried to use canning funnels before, yeah, you but can, they're not big enough. Yeah, you yeah. can use a canning funnel for smaller pieces. It's mm -hmm. like, and they're cheap. They're like plastic funnel with a big giant, you know, mouth, and then you just stick it in the bag. And I love that solution from yeah. Bill Ward. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, 14 and a half inches US wide, which would be 365 millimeters, I'm guessing. Um, and then front to back 10 inches US or 280. And then depth two and a half inches or 65 millimeters. Wow, we've, we've spent nice. 65, of, yeah. We've spent a lot of time trying to make sure that our bins fit well inside of our square opening bookcases. Yeah, what I've found is these can actually nest inside one of these 66 quart sterilite containers if you really need to. Oh, um, oh. But, cool. yeah, Want so. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Ward wants that? to know what the dimensions are in studs. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a convert app for that. Re yeah. Rewind it and convert it online. <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> Ten by, ten by fourteen inches. You can, you can see. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, you know, Sariel I, can calculate that for you. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, just, yeah. I did. I did. Um, so, so one reason I, I know that it's it cuts against the grain, but one reason I do like the Ziploc bag method of putting quarts inside of gallons and whatnot. So, as you start out, you can just put all your plates in a little quart bag, and then as it grows and expands, you can always add more Ziploc bags and it, it keeps growing with you. But also I crush all the air out of it as I wrap it. So I, each one of these bags, you know, I roll it up and crush all the air out. And so when I, when I put it in these containers, there's never a gap in the container system so that mm. I only have to buy another container and, and I could stack these. Now I'm kind of fit, so I can always be pulling three off to get to the fourth on the bottom and take it out or whatnot. Yeah. But it's sort of, um, I've recently put in those chef racks that are wire racks with the chrome oh, nice. that are those NSF racks. Yeah, Aris Power uses those. Yeah. yeah, it turns out that two of these 66 quarts and then one of these butterfly cartons fit exactly in the width of one of those racks. Wow. And then I if set the use... height up. If you use industrial containers on industrial shelving, isn't it funny how they're all designed to work together? Oh, it's very surprising. And oh, then I, know, I, I feel like, um, Moto, I just wanted to sort of read, um, enforce something that you said earlier, which is, um, I think maybe we, we sort of breezed over, but absolutely getting stuff at the hardware store for your containers is so much cheaper than getting them at like the container store, which is bananas expensive. Like it's, it's weird. Like I found the same, like the same thing when I was decorating cakes, if it was for, if let's say like it was a cutter for fondant, if it was a fondant cutter, it was five, $10. If it was a clay cutter for Fimo, it was $2. So it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, what are they marketing it for? Like, they know people who bake cakes will pay a lot of money to, like, get something fancy, but you could always yeah. get the, you know, it doesn't have to be that big fancy thing. Well, we've done well at Target, yes. right? And Michael's, too. What's, what's yeah, that? We've done yeah. well at Target and Michael's. Oh, yeah, no, Target and Michael's, yeah. On, I'm just sale. on sale. I'm just talking about, like, the. I guess I'm more specifically talking about, like, the container store, which is... Yeah, like, in general, the, the, yeah, the specialty stores will always, you know, have it upcharged to them. Um, and then, uh, so for Richard, I wanted to mention, you know, I have, I do have a Technic container one for when I'm doing onesie twosie stuff. Yeah. Like, like if I have to... I've right. got again. You can just pull any of those bags out. Like I have friends. I have a lot of friends. I, I yeah. work on on technical crews hanging theatrical lights. 
Mm-hmm. And a lot of us now put a lot of smaller bags inside of our tool bag for that same reason. You just pull. Yeah, it. you guys are talking about sorting the links. So I sort by length and by color type if there are if, if there are yeah. differences oh, in nice. it. Oh, nice. Those yeah, are all axes. Yeah. The uh, pick a brick cups too. Like I have, you know, I have bags to yeah. divide stuff in here too. Sometimes if mm-hmm. you know if I have enough of any one part, sometimes and they're bigger parts, it's tedious with the smaller mm-hmm. stuff. But as I get into bigger parts like slopes and stuff. Especially if you, you know, if you have to combine like your, you know, all your inverted with regular slopes or something, it, it gets really hard to tell those apart. So that's when I start to divide yeah. things in the back. And, and Holly, if I could, I would love your system because drawers is much faster than up, unlocking and Pretty nice. relocking yeah. stuff, right? And stacking things. But the other thing is I do is I will pre, in the pre-COVID times, you know, the, the time before time. Yeah. Um, the time before time. <laughs> The, the majority, yeah, the majority of my building, as long as the weather was good, was at a playground. So I take my son to the playground and he would play from 1 to 6 p.m. every afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. Wow. So so he gets his playtime and he gets to hang out with other kids and, and do all that stuff. But it's very easy for me to, like Blair was saying, a convention kit, it's very easy to take the, the gallon bags of wherever you are in your build and then throw them in two of these sterilite containers put it in the trunk go to the playground and just carry them yeah. over and start to build in the playground and it's kind of i don't know i don't know it's kind of fun if i'm getting toward the end of one of my models all the parents and kids just love the interactivity of seeing this model kind of on a park bench table oh yeah as i'm working on it and then when you know when lego masters richard flynn when your show is airing I had the Lego Masters bag out front, <laughs> and then, and then I, you know, in a building, and people are like, you know, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, that's Lego! I can't believe it. It's like, yeah. And by the way, there's this TV show you should check out. No. So, you know, oh, cool. So working so that. Found, um, I found that this yeah. is a pretty cool little travel container. Um, it's just it's meant for like a lunch. It's kind of like a lunch kit or lunch box. Oh, we have one of those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are kind of nice. Um, we if used one of those small building because it gives you it's got the little divided sections and then this gives you a little bit of a surface to work on oh, to work on yeah, yeah like a con so like i used to use these, like i would take these with me on camping trips and yeah uh build when i was camping so as a matter of fact we cool. took one of those with us to auditions for lego masters yeah um with some awesome. stuff we were with practicing a couple on. of like <laughs> yeah a couple of mini builds that we wanted to practice in the hotel room so that's really cool. Have... But yeah, you could. Yeah, I was just going to say that's my 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 system is the poor person system, which is uh, the, you know the Ziploc bags are very cheap. Uh, these containers, if you have a Costco membership or maybe even a the Sam's Club, you can get them highly discounted. Um, this was from Target here in the U.S. Um, but yeah, with very cheap, limited resources, you can you can increase in, increase your collection until you're really into the craft, and you can you know you can do Blair Holly. Richard Flynn, some of these uh, really nice systems I wish I had. I just don't have the room. So, but yeah, I, that's the way to go. Sorry, real quick, because it's, it's yep. way far back in the chat. I just okay. wanted to say, because I know Moda will appreciate this. Okay. Shane Levan says, it's really hard for me to contain my excitement for this episode. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> and wait, wait, it gets better. There was a response oh, um, that said, uh, and I can't remember who said it now. It says, I'm sure you will sort it oh, out. I think it was Depot Brick. <laughs> Ridiculous. And... <laughs> Oh my gosh! Sorry, these are, that was these are golden. I had to mention that. Yeah, that was like, how can we get by without? Um, Gotta have the puns. That. Gotta have the puns. <laughs> and uh, Richard Flynn, I dropped a second version of a highlight reel from episodes twenty-one through forty now. Oh, so I, can't wait. I have to see it. Yep. I have to see yep. that. So if anybody wants to relive, uh, you know, the moments, there's a there's a, the, the the best part of it is when you guys went from the stop motion to HD. That's really cool to watch. <laughs> Again, <laughs> everybody will jump quickly away from the screen when that happens. No, no, no. Don't, don't go now. No. Don't go now. <laughs> okay, so I know they aged it out 30 afterwards. years in one day. What happened? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I have a question for everyone here. Um, I have a, I have multiple theories about reality that I've developed in my time on the planet. Oh, one of, boy. One of oh, them boy. is the smooth, bumpy theory of reality. Hmm? 
And the smooth, bumpy theory goes like this. In our minds, we come up with a theory and a model for reality, and it's very smooth, and to get from point A to point B is very direct, and it's logical. And then you take that theory out into the real world, right? Like, let's say you make a Lego mechanic in your head. You say, this gear meshes with that, it's perfect. You make it in the real world, and the real world has bumps, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with that. So we've all talked about our utopian view of organization for our homes and our situation and our travel. So how well do each of you think you're doing at, you know, at that system? Like we're half of our system does not fit in our organization <laughs> system right now, you know, so and we're stemming the tide and we're trying to organize. So how are all of you doing? Stemming the tide means putting them in a cardboard box and up on top of the new shelves we just made, by the way. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. So so one thing, so if anybody's talked to builders who do wood shop type stuff, like Adam Savage you were mentioning, um, there's this thing called a log jam that hasn't been talked about on the, on the chat. So the log jam is all of the bits and pieces that are left over from all your projects that you throw into that corner or a container. Um, everybody I know has unsorted log jam somewhere in their place, and that's okay to have. You know, there's always this extra brick or junk or bits that just get shoved into a container that's unsorted from things as you go. And then every once in a while, maybe twice a year, I'll go through the log jam and put it back and sort it correctly. But I always wait for a large volume of stuff just to make my sorting worth its time rather than individually mm. putting things away. Yeah. Because I find the incremental just wastes time. So I always have a log jam container. And it, the size can vary depending on what you like. But once that certain container gets filled, I know that I have enough where it's worth the time to sort it back down and put it back. Um, Oh, well, yeah, that's the other way to do it. Um, yeah. I, I that's think, the obvious choice. <laughs> I think I'm lucky in that I kind of broke things out into, it's messy, but I have two or three of the large containers for my projects that I'm currently working on that are the stuff I have to access very quickly. And then I've got a storage area in the house where I have a footprint of about six containers that I use moderately often where I have to swap the containers out to the floor. And then I have, my garage has, you know, I can't remember what it was, 12 to 15 of the mega containers. That's like deep storage where I have to walk quite a distance across my property to do a swap. But it's kind of like a, the idea of RAM and then hard drive and then like tape storage. You know, there's these varying degrees of what I have to access and how fast it's going to take to swap things out. That's kind of how I try to keep things under control, you know, and then the log jam is a certain size and I just don't like to sort. But if I do a bulk buy or something, then it's time to throw that log jam into the, into the bulk buy and then tear through it to a point where it's reasonably put away. But yeah, I, I, I mean, new room. we just need more RAM. I love, <laughs> I love that comparison too. And like your log jam is like your cash folder, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like stuff that's piling up over there. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. Have, I have more like I have more like temp directories <laughs> and a lot yeah. of them. <laughs> temp, temp, yeah, we could all use, you know, that's I guess it's the uh, metaphor I went to. But yeah, it, just to drive the conversation, but like, like, oh, like, oh, Cara, we haven't talked about yours, yeah, like your storage. I don't think no, I think you were that's when you were gone. Wasn't yeah, it? you missed it. Oh, okay. but, um, never mind. Then. Never mind. I just okay. want to make sure I want to make sure you had your turn. Yeah, no. And, I, you know, you've all sort of touched on it, on this concept that I, I really wanted to bring up, which is that we all build and create in different ways. And you're, there, so there's no one perfect way to sort anything because, like, while Holly's is beautiful, and I would love to have that, um, I, it, I would end up pulling out 25 of those drawers and putting them on a table <laughs> and then stack up a whole bunch of the containers over here. It's just because I mean, I think it was, I was pretty candid with the space. There's definitely some like corners of, you know, like mm -hmm. there's, there's very little that's actually organized. There's so it, many piles of like to be, to be sorted and, and yep. miscellaneous, like, and like I said, my kids coming in here and constantly like picking out things. It's not, it's not organized. I mean, it, 
it's like potentially it could be, but it's not really. Okay. Well, but the idea is that, I mean, we all build differently. And yeah. so you, yeah. you really want to store your bricks in a way that facilitates how you're building, right? Yeah. So if it's you an always, illusion. It's it an is illusion. illusion. Yeah, exactly. So like That's Moto awesome. it always goes with those those color families, right? Mm -hmm. Go right there, and that's how you think. And so, I mean, I think in terms of color a lot too, but I also, um, the, yeah. the, the, the connections that the bricks make um, are also, that was a really interesting way, Moda, that you were, you were sorting them out. Um, uh, because when I'm building something, I generally pull out like 30 different types of bricks to say, maybe this brick will be better here in this, in this, oh no, let me try this one instead. Maybe I'll try those two. So I, I just like, I have a very sort of chaotic. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, creative so, process, you know? Yeah. I want, I do want to say for anybody who's starting out to build sorting by type is really crucial first, yeah. because um, until you've memorized a large part of the BrickLink catalog and you know a lot of the standard connections and you've memorized them in totality and you're thinking, so I think, so Iceberg talked about, I think in probabilities, I tend to see the eight different ways I could do a connection and I settle one very quickly without touching brick. And that's why my system is sorted that way. It, it, in the early days, when you're very experimental in your nature, I would say you wanna sort by type. And for example, you wanna put anything that's a hinge. So the bar hinges, the click hinges, mm -hmm. the, the um, Technic connectors, everything that could be possibly construed as a hint, the ear, ear pieces, all of that should go in that general vicinity because they're designed to solve a hinge problem. Mm -hmm. um, yep, or, I did the same thing. Yeah, so, so definitely sorting by type, but also consider sorting by the type of connection that those things wind up creating and then grouping them that way so that, yes, if you're trying to problem solve, you're, you're, you're saying, I need a hinge here then you're looking at all the different types of hinge connectors. So they have different offsets. They have different heights. They have different yeah. ways they'll come together. And you can quickly experiment with six or seven types until you find that perfect fit. And that's just natural. But it, then as you gain experience and you kind of mentally have the math solved out, then maybe, it, you know, then you can change the way you do it. But I would say that's why the vast majority of builders, and, and don't do it my way, definitely do it by type first because and organized by the types of connections because that's where you, you can experiment to solve something very quickly and then worry about getting the right color in later, at least in my experience. If you have time to sort it all. Well, that's you don't. Yeah, I don't know, some still. So. <laughs> Which, to, to cycle back around, I wanted to um, so yeah. touch on a couple things. One, uh, Holly, when you busted out the pick-a-brick cup, um, <laughs> I, there were two things I wanted to mention about pick a brick cups because they come up twice. One, uh, the frosted outside does not work with us. It yeah. actually kind of works against us. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, but um, it does obscure. Can't the see what's concept. in there. Yeah. yeah. How, and there was also a really cool tip I wanted to give to the community and the friends here that was given to me by one of my um, Lego brand retail store employee friends, which is that if you're going to fill a pick a brick cup in the store, and you are still working under the conventional, I'm actually filling a cup and I'm doing the right thing and then it has to close. Um, but you want to keep your stuff kind of separated, bring some napkins and you take like one ply of napkin and you put your first layer of parts down and you put one ply of napkin down. And then you put your next layer of parts down and you put another pl ply of napkin down. You grab them at the food court or whatever on your way in. Oh, if you're mixing your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yep. yeah if you're not buying a full cup of one right. item, you can, you know, compartmentalize amongst that. Sure, you might lose a little bit, you know, for napkin space here and there, but when you're at home later, you can hold those napkins in place and not have to mix all of your parts as you dump them out of the container. Yeah, that's a good tip. I, I just use child labor instead. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I should do that. I should run to the food court or, well, you know what? I have, since I'm a parent, I have a million of those napkins like sitting in my car. Yep. I think every parent does. Extra. Yeah. Just pull some of those out as I go in. That's a great just idea. Just even tissues or something like that might might be a really yeah. good like thin divider. That's a good idea. I might actually do it because I do like 
my son always wants to go with me when I, when I, back in the day when there was a pick a brick wall, you know, my son would always go with me and he would sit there and build something while I was filling the cup. And that was like always his job was to help, you know, sort the pieces. But then I end up losing half a cup because while he's like sorting, he's like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. taking half the parts. Um, and the other thing to cycle back around was I did mm -hmm. look it up and it is storage 707 on Lugnet. whatever you want to call it, about the description of an evolution of Lego collection sorting is so spot on. And it's everybody, pretty funny. I mean, it's hilarious. It's so true to life. Um, and even though it's from 2001, it's still 100% relevant to anybody who's in Lego collecting or sorting or building at all, because they go through every single step from the first fledgling moments all the way through the i think i need another house so it's yeah. just it's a really great read and honestly um, that's where we, we just we just moved into this house so it is very real the i mean i had basically a closet sized room before we moved in into this house and now and then we pr pretty much bought this house because it had a big open basement yeah like, because i just put it in the chat because i'm a moderator so you guys can all have it mm -hmm. Hey, so I just wanted to, to I just wanted to say like we some new people have been showing up since we've been here. Ben Khan just showed up. Oh hi Ben. Um, ben. Ben, hey, ben says I, I just got a new house to fit my Lego. <laughs> yeah, we moved out, actually Ben and I moved at the same time and we bought houses like like five, ten minutes away from each other. <laughs> like we moved to that part of town where you can actually get a you know the, the, the space. <laughs> like we you know, for me I had to actually move out of the city into the burbs, not for that reason. I actually moved to be closer to work because it's a commute thing, but you know, the, the, the pro was that I ended up with this like big basement that I, and it was just a big open basement that I, I spent a lot of time designing this space before I went and got all the stuff. I had a full on like 3d layout. I had all the measurements from all the stuff from Ikea and I was like pre visiting it and everything. So it, this isn't haphazard. This was like so, years, years so, and years in my old place, making a lot of mistakes that I learned from. <laughs> So if what I'm inferring is you and Ben are going to have this deep underground tunnel, kind of like bootlegging, <laughs> they're going to be bootlegging like brick back and forth between. <laughs> Maybe. Uh oh. So I wanted to. Um, I did want to show a couple of things more about our collection, and then there was a question in the chat about um, storing minifigs, and so I grabbed some of our minifig storage as well. So I'm just going to, I'll just real quickly sort of breeze through. Well, uh, we, we were inspired about... by by Drew, right? Drew yes. Dershel yes. And, and his method. Drew, who's a collector who didn't have a dark age. He's been, con you know, continuously, continuously collecting for his entire life. So and has superpowers of organization. Yeah, he's really good. So he, yeah, this is what we learned from him. So this is... I have textured bricks and um, like brick bricks in separate containers, but what used to be a box that I couldn't fit the lid entirely on, I started stacking them. So I just have like these little cubed stacks of all brick bricks all in all different colors. colors and it fits, they actually like fit into the container now, which well, like literally they were, they were over, they were making the lid bulge, which is making it hard. But it also reduces, you know, we spend, we figure we spend about 50% of time of our model building time looking for bricks. So now if we want a dark red profile brick, yeah, they're all together. Even, you know, cause like, even though we do color families, for a lot of things you're still digging through finding all of whatever that particular color is so i highly suggest um uh, uh yeah bill i know it'll it will hurts their it hurts their clutch power over time but honestly like i i don't i don't know that it's enough that it's going to make a huge difference to my uh, to our model building and we don't do that with everything um no that would be yeah, like crazy I was wondering, do you do it like with wedge plates and things like that, where I, t no. I tend to lock and tessellate them, you know, just to save time? Do you do oh, anything I do like that? Too, just so you have a left and right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and okay. oh, that makes sense. I've done yeah. it with one by N plates so far, but then I ran out of steam. But again, and again, this is a personal preference. Um, the, um, you know, Bill and, and um, Ben are both saying, yeah, there's like the clutch power issue. So I think it's a, it's a personal preference thing. Like, there's yeah, also, I guess 
the um, wear and tear on pieces if you're if you're constantly shuffling through. So you know, there's a balance to that too. Oh yeah, right? Right. Like, scratching. Now up. that you have your pieces stacked, sure, maybe all the studs are being affected, but they're keeping their real nice sheen, and you only have to pull them out very gently, as opposed to like shuffling through and picking them. And it's like you don't get that rock yeah. tumbler effect as much. Well, it really helped us with the snot pieces because try and find in that. Try and find the one sand green snot piece that has studs on both three sides. sides or two oh sides. Oh my gosh. It yeah. Oh, 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 that gives I me the same thing. I, I, I stack them together too, so I haven't had any problems with the clutch. Yeah, and I know, um, many Big Chick, you said in the chat and not <laughs> here that you, it seems like a lot of work to stack and unstack. It's a little bit of work, but I literally we did it did while that. watching TV. I was watching a movie, and I just because they're all the same piece, you just it's just easy to boop, 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 and make a column. So I totally. Here, you, want to talk about, you want to talk about minifig storage for a bit? Because I... yes, yeah, so yeah. minifig yeah. storage. We've only got about ten minutes left, so um, we'll. I already I'll do, I'll do Oh my gosh! Is that, oh, the time just flew by. But um, this is so these we got from Michaels. And it's like a, a Those are cool. it's craft case used for used for to photos. put in either photos or your scrapbooking materials or whatever you whatever you have. And what I've done here is um, like for this particular box, I have mine divided. I have these divided up into themes. So like I have you know two boxes of monsters. Wait, how did that? What kind of storage is that? You have like sub containers. Yeah, yeah, there's just containers and stuff on photos container. separate. Yeah, so for uh, four by six photos, and you can get them in a five by seven size as well. I do the same thing. Flynn inspired me to do. This. What? Yeah, so these are from Michaels, and they are always on sale. You can get them for like mm -hmm. fifteen dollars or ten dollars. Oh my they gosh! Have, um, and they it's have, my they birthday. Make... Yeah. <laughs> 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 what would what'd you say, Blair? I said, and it's my birthday. And just it's saying. Your birthday. Just saying. No, they make yeah, two they, different kinds. Um, they make one where the um, the drawers are all rainbow color, that's what uh, I was and then they say, make yeah. the clear ones. Now, depending on how you build, maybe you'd like the le the the um, the all ones with the colored ones. But and then what I did, and going back to labeling, and <clears> this is where I think word labels come in really handy. I was able to label all of my i hate the way that gets dark yeah i was able to label them all so i know these are the harry potter ones and these are the medieval ones and these are the whatever and then now that was um, a week you spent a week working yep, on that right but i love that container because it has feet on the bottom yep versus does. the handle so you set it on that foot and when you open it toward you all the slides are right there for you to pull yes it's true and i have um I wow. mean, they also um they stack and you can put them sideways depending on uh, and then this is so. This is my and, and it's funny. Eric, uh, uh, Eric Hoke Bricks uses assist, uh, these as well for his stuff. But I have them all divided up into like, here's the container of heads. And uh, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not the only person who stacks heads by expression to find them quickly too. Yeah, right. The only reason yeah, mine aren't organized yeah, is because I, I use them, them for by, my bright color and express. Like I have like all the ones that have glasses and beards <laughs> like in a stack. But then, you know, and then I've got short hair, long hair, you know, depending on, on what. But yeah, and then I have legs, torsos, and all of it in one. So if I want to build a minifigure, I grab this container. If I want to dig through the ones that already are, like, specifically things, we can go through the other. And we have, a, we have then, four of these. But then for props, we go back to, like, yeah, Same. back to that thing. Yep. Just because they're easier to grab. Now you're can I show my like let me show my minifigure display case oh, how I store do. or am working on storing a lot of special minifigs. And so this is a display case. Again, I think if we got it at Michael's, Let's see if I can show it here. So this is a display case that is sold as um, uh, a sports jersey display and it opens on the front. And we glued base plates to the back of it. So now I can make these little vignettes to showcase some of my special collectible minifigs. How fun you can make all different backgrounds for them. Yep. And hey, Blair. Then, uh, Blair, it's a, stud it's a studded picture frame. Yeah, yeah I know, exactly. Right? And then it, it closes so it keeps the dust off because dust is really a problem here in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's about, it's about uh, four or five 
um, bricks deep, so you can really get some dimensionality on these builds. I mean, you can see the, she's holding her surfboard out. I mean, there's lots of room in here. I well, think I that, that you can make the vignettes. Ours are just sort of standing next to one another in their case. They don't have much action about them. Yeah, and I, I love making those tiny little vignettes. I mean, it's just, that's my, one of my favorite things to do with Legos is those, is those just small little scenes. So I think, I think I've got to buy the, the right plywood and glue four of those 48 base plates together and just hang it somewhere because actually having all the figs out in front it reminds me of that Lego Masters wall where you can just pull them out as you need them. I That'd so be really wanted cool. to climb those stairs oh and gosh. just grab oh, yeah, those Holly, mini pigs. Great. It was so hard Holly. not to. Holy <laughs> God, Holly. I know. Can you believe it? <laughs> so it's, it's a similar it, thing. They, hey, guys, they're... Hey guys, be careful. It's only like 70% of the way to being perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know, man. You don't even know. Same thing. So they open up, um, and then they're inside. They're owned. Again, keep all the dust off. Trying to... Um, it, but yeah, that's am my I CMF right that collection this is an mostly. Almost, almost complete collection of CMFs. Minus one. <laughs> that's right. And then this is the start of my superhero collection, but this is just the stuff that I that I have unboxed and out. Um, but these are going to move. These are going somewhere else. Um, yeah, and yeah. Then Star Wars guys over here. Yeah, don't even look at that. That's so that's so rough and unfinished. Don't even don't even look at it. Holly, I do want to I do want to express a mild concern for the figures closer to those lights, though, because I know stuff in uh, I had stuff in the Lego store for a while in one of the um, community windows, and and they ended up with discoloration, and that stuff's mm -hmm. all in. Oh, yeah, they haven't been in there very long. They used to be in cabinets that didn't have lights, um, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them permanently. But that's a good point because I'm still kind of assessing. Can you just turn the lights off until you have visitors they, you yeah, really want to look at it? Those lights okay. aren't on There you go. Just for you guys. And then I use another one of these. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Yeah, we might actually have some at work too. I'll ask around. Oh, I bet you do. Oh, okay. Eric also says it's only certain kind of lights, but anyway. <laughs> It's true. It's true. It's just I saw oh. your collection. You know, you don't want that collection to be. Um, so those are the vintage totally. to that. vintage figs, I assume. Um, some of them, yeah. I mean, so I use these containers again. This was like I only had a few of these in the beginning, and I just ended up getting a bunch. So I actually do, right. you know, use use these. Um, I just I actually just really like this kind of again sort of semi sorted haphazard uh, mm -hmm. way. Yeah, it's of, very very medieval up figures. in that place. Yeah, I mean, that's what I sort of gravitate towards. Um, and then same thing for my kids, you know, like, they can come in here and just kind of rummage through and find there's always like little treasures to be found in these. But yeah, I use the sides for like accessories, and then these for like mm -hmm. heads and hair pieces, and then the rest of the, you know, assemblies go in the oh, bigger my favorite area. Head right there. Yeah, so I got several of those that I just stack up. Um, Gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. That's how I work. Yeah. Yeah, it was Blair. Blair, not me. Yeah, that's definitely Blair. <laughs> I'm very structured in the way I store stuff. I mean, seriously, you pull out these drawers. I know you guys think I'm joking. I'm really like, you pull out these drawers and it's not, it's not organized, really. I mean, maybe that's a bad example, but. Yeah, no, it's. <laughs> Most of them are not. Finally, finally, we caught her with the. See, that's what I'm talking about—a log jam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's some, there's some like method to the chaos, but it's not, you know, they're not. Um, it's. Oh it's man. Not, like, not every single piece is organized. I just have a system that I put in place so that I have, okay, friend stuff can go in here, and next one ice can go in here, and elves can go in here. Well, and it then, is, but you know, you know what also blows my mind is you know you're just casually walking around. I'm seeing like, oh, there's the upside down set from, and then oh, there's the modular building, and it's like the the backdrop of all of these incredible sets yeah, that I you have staged around. Like, you really thought through I, it. Yeah, when I exactly because I made so many mistakes in my last place where I had where I was always trying to balance that build space versus display space versus like 
you know, the organizing and, you know, I made so many mistakes that when we bought the new place, I was like, okay, I know I need, you know, X amount, like there's at least a ratio of, I need this much, you know, like organization, this much display space and this much of a build space. And I've just confined it to that space. So right now I've got this one big kitchen island that we actually repurposed from uh, the kitchen of our old place. That's what, that's what my build table is. It was just like, cool. yeah, it was just an Ikea kitchen island that we'd had for a decade. And how many how really many people want to want to have Holly's place and swap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So I basically That's amazing. De- I basically determined that this was kind of the centerpiece. You know, I was going to repurpose this table because it didn't fit in the kitchen of our new house. And I knew I needed a build table and I just landed on, okay, it's already standing height. It already has a little bit of storage space on one side. It has a place where you can sit underneath it on the other side. It just, it basically ended up being the perfect build table and I didn't have to pay anything for it. Um, and then I made that kind of my centerpiece and then that's my build space. I can't build any bigger. I'm just not allowing myself to, to do anything crazy beyond that. You know, I have that coffee table over there where we can just really spread out and, you know, make play sets and stuff. But if I want to build a mock, it's not going to be any bigger than this table. And then everything around that is like, okay, I've got, you know, display shelves on, you know, these sides and then I've got storage along this wall like I kind of designated the um it's kind of like when you're building a kitchen or designing a kitchen you have that like triangle you know what I'm saying like where you have like a certain function to it so I just made sure that I designed it in a way that it's functional and it is kind of like a, it's almost like a main living space and the house so I wanted to make sure it wasn't just out of control and ugly so and- so Holly you know how some people sell instructions yeah. Ingrid, Ingrid saying, saying you could uh, you could sell the, the the plans to your basement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I put a I put a lot of time into it. I did. <laughs> yeah. In your day work, I can tell that you do a lot of project based work because you're you know while you do a lot of digital work, I feel like your space is really laid out ergonomically. Like you can reach the yes. things that you need to reach. And that's something we found with our table, having that bookcase right behind it, is we prioritized all the things we regularly need, like Moto talks about is like go-to containers. So I don't have to walk across the room every time I want a plate. Right. Yeah. That's always and just I such even, a battle. I even designed it so half the room is like, I showed you guys earlier, it's kind of the loungy, like video game movie room area, which I still left space, right? Like I still have build space there and display space around it but I still left it like a like a family room where the kids can come down and hang out and I even hung the tv like in a way that you know I positioned everything so I can sit here and build and watch movies with them and you know it's like (laughs) it's it's just like yeah it's a very very multi-purpose space and of course now I have to use this table for work too so that was the that was the extra um challenge I wasn't anticipating okay I'll say something controversial here oh dear (laughs) Okay, Not go too for controversial, it. but and maybe this is very self-serving, <laughs> but the difference between hoarding and collecting is organization. In line. <laughs> True. What's what's controversial about that? It, I think we all agree on that. <laughs> is it is it though? <laughs> we try yeah. I mean, if you think about it in the most legendary way, think of a dragon and their horde, right? They're literally they're literally sleeping in it. Like, yeah. it's everywhere, you know? It's probably got dragon feces in it, you know? Like, that's Ew, a hoard. No. That's a hoard, right? That's hoarding, right? You know, your house is full of newspapers to the ceiling, and your house can be full of Lego to the ceiling, too. I'm not going to name any names, but there is a glass ceiling for even the new house. And if you want to see what a, you know, a multi-million dollar Tudor mansion looks like when you add multi-million Lego bricks, it's a mess. But you know the organization is the key, right? And and I think you're I think you're onto something there, Richard, right? Like that you know we are if you're sleeping in your unorganized bulk Lego, you're hoarding. But if yeah. you make me get very a- happy, <laughs> you make me happy by saying that because I realize that our bed is the one place in the house that has zero bricks. There is, <laughs> is not one brick in our bed. I can yeah, say that. Yeah, but you guys sure. have stepped on a Lego. Who's going to really realistically sleep on a Lego pile? And if you do, you deserve some sort of award. 
I mean, it is, it is true also, like we, we, you know, this is fairly contained, like it, it has a space, like this space right here is where it's allowed to kind of get messy and get out of control, but it has to be sort of confined to this space. Like if you go to the upstairs of our house, there's not really Lego anywhere up there. So that's the balance we've, we've arranged. And same thing with my husband, like he has his stuff, he has stuff that he collects and it's the same thing. Like he has his place in his space where he can make a mess or do whatever the hell he's doing over there. And you know, the rest of the house stays somewhat presentable. <laughs> yep. Well, my Seems friends, everywhere. We Seems have, reasonable enough, right? We have oh rolled over the two hour mark. So I think we're gonna we should probably call it for today. Well, I feel like there was a lot to talk about there and you all brought a lot of experience to it. Yeah, I hope um I hope everybody out there got something out of today, learned a new way to organize things. And... <laughs> Marilyn Parmley. <laughs> Marilyn Parmley says, Okay, we are hoarding. Bricks in our bedroom. Does it count if Steve moved it from the office to the bedroom? No. <laughs> <laughs> see we we move from room to room it's then you can pretend it's not yes a horde you know by the way we're not we're, we're not, not judging we're just justifying no. absolutely i'm just <laughs> I, I was just providing some visual it's it's the difference between smaug sleeping in the gold and fort knox right like fort knox is organized gold under the mountain is disorganized gold in every room literally cascading everywhere you know so that's yeah. the difference. If it's to the point mm. that you don't notice dragon feces, you might have a problem. Right? <laughs> you well, wake up with a brick stuck to your chest. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if we ever see Flynn or Richard with the imprint of like studs on their cheeks or their foreheads, we'll know it's finally gone too far. Well, I wanted to, um, I just wanted to thank everybody, all of our, all of our guests for coming up, like showing up again on a Sunday and giving about part of your day to hang out with all of us and talk about crazy, our crazy Lego hobby. And I, uh, again, I hope that uh, people out there learned some, some sort of new sorting thing today that maybe they didn't know before or hadn't thought about before. Or doesn't um, feel as guilty about the state of their collection. Exactly. Or, <laughs> yes, if we help assuage your guilt about the size of your collection. Um, to, or got a wanna, heads up on what not to do. Remind yeah, everybody too. about the build challenge for this week. Um, it is building something with the Street Sweeper set. Um, you may use a base plate, and you may also, um, sorry, add extra minifigures, but otherwise you're only using the bricks from this set. Your photos are due on uh, Thursday, and um, this one we're allowing people to do multiple photos so that if people want to show, like, different p sides of it, uh, but yeah. you are limited to three. Because I have a feeling we're going to be getting, uh, like, we hit another milestone on our last challenge. We had 26 entries, which is one more than the most we've ever had. Um, yeah. And then, uh, so I'm hoping we get even more. And like I was saying the other day, we yeah. apparently um, bought all of the ones that Amazon had. <laughs> like, Amazon is now <laughs> out of them. So I think uh, a lot, hopefully a lot of people get some... some uh, some we're able to get the set and build some cool stuff see in the spirit of community brickanista says we are co-enablers it's true <laughs> it's true um so thank you to everybody for coming i hope you have an awesome rest of your pride uh sunday weekend i know i'm i'm going to get to see a certain someone who's in the room right now in person i'm very excited <laughs> Um, and not only do we get to see uh, a minifig chick and paint pusher and hang out with them, and we will also be getting our uh, Scooby-Doo mystery mansion that we found oh on the... Um, so I'll finally finally have my Velma and Daphne. I'll finally like, complete... Like, and a mansion collection. And, and, yes, and then we will officially have, I think, all of the haunted houses that all are available buildings. to have. To have for haunts. So, um, <laughs> oh. uh, I think I think cue cards in this show are going to be a thing now. We can just like Moto, register I, emotions. I love the the graphic elements that you've been adding to to today's <laughs> to today's show. Serious graphics coming from Moto. So, um, and also, th <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we had a new people in here today. Uh, that we I, like names I haven't seen before, and I'm sorry if we didn't get you as we were as we were going through. But I just wanted to say um, thanks everybody for joining us. If you are new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell button if you want to be reminded of when we when we go live. Uh, we do um, stream five days a week right now, 
And this is just like an announcement to everyone. We are going to be going down to four days a week. We are going to um, stop streaming on Thursdays. Um, probably not this week because we're just announcing yeah. it now and we want to give everybody plenty of time to adjust. Um, and then we will probably starting next week, we will be dropping Thursdays and going down to four yeah. days a week, which again, only make, gives us more time to make the stream better. Yeah. So less streams, better stuff is what I'm, yeah. what I'm really hoping. And less you're wondering, even though, um, we're, you know, so many people are going back to work and my schedule is heating up and all that we're planning on the tricky bricks build and chat continuing past when we can all hang out together, when we can all go to conventions together, all that we feel like we've built something we really like and it may change shape but it's going to hang around yeah tricky lug's not going anywhere so it's just going to be <laughs> you know like i said better you know better more interesting and fun things and just less days a week um and having i again i think having that extra day will be really helpful and i noticed there's um I noticed uh, somebody was saying that they hadn't seen, they can only come to the live stream on Sundays, and we're so glad that you're able to join us. Yeah. And also, these are all recorded, and they are all on our YouTube channel. There's a, there's actually a, um, a playlist called Live Streams that has all 78 episodes of the show. I suggest, I don't know, um, I think Moto would know more than me, but when did we switch from the... Um, what episode was it that we switched from uh, over to the HD and actually had like a functioning computer that, that wasn't like on a walker trying to move? There wasn't a hamster. <laughs> what a moment. <laughs> yeah, at a certain point when we first started, it was like there was a hamster wheel that was running the whole thing and it was like stop action animation. But yeah. people, people stuck by us. It's true. You can only wind a Lego rover band so far. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, you're going to be, um, Holly, you're going to be on Mel's stream today, right? Iceberg yeah. Bricks here on YouTube. Yeah, I think we might, I think we might uh, dive into the Susan build a little bit, so just a quick tease there. Yeah. That's why I had that all set up. And there's a character from... Missing Link. Very good. By Leica. Which you should see. By Leica. If you haven't. You should see. If you this haven't. is awesome Hopefully and super Hopefully everybody's fun. seen it. And it's on streaming now, so you've got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah you have till you have till two PM this afternoon to go watch it. <laughs> 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 um Iceberg show is at it'll be two PM here on on Pacific. the on the West Coast and then whatever that is. Five o'clock over there. Episode Thanks, thirty-one. Moto. So Better thank you, do. Moto. Episode thirty-one. So maybe skip the first thirty episodes. <laughs> there was fun and excitement. No, there was lots of fun, but really, I, I am, I'm still. I would amazed. say you can watch, watch the, the reel. you can watch my two highlight reels, and within forty minutes, you'll get through full, all the stop motion stuff. But you also get to see the introduction of Miss Thing, Logan Cookie Time, all those standard features that are coral that are part of the uh, that are part of the stuff today. Find that. Moto, how are we find um, that? I'll put the link to the second episode, but I have a YouTube channel, and they're just they're both in there side by side. Can or... you can you guys put it in the YouTube description on this episode? Yeah, there you go. We'll do that. There's um yeah, mm -hmm. send me the send me the link, Moto, and then I will, and also too, just everybody's yeah. um everybody's <laughs> got ways to be found. I know uh so on Instagram we are tricky bricks and blair is lego underscore stud on instagram is that right yep and, and uh, uh slick bricks on Flickr. and then moto is are you just moto on instagram or is uh, no, moto Mo lego moto lego okay no space or anything no i'm not I'm all confused and minifig <laughs> chick you're minifig chick minifig right? chick and oh, it's mo Holly. mine's Moto dot Lego. Moto, Moto, Moto Lego. dot Lego. Yeah. Okay. And from there, you'll get Flickr links and all the other good stuff. Ooh, we should. And Holly, up... where's your, what's your Instagram? Uh, H Walkman. Like my name is, the yeah, my my alt last yeah. name is spelled there. Just with an H, in the front. H Walkman. Yeah. All right. We'll put up we'll put up a cast of characters <laughs> with, with, with the a floating of... pictures, and it'll be yeah. very high tech. And hooded one, you are right. Someone did say coral. Coral. Yes. Coral. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. where we're going to be doing another one of our how-to videos. And I have no idea what it's going to be yet, but we'll It'll decide be this afternoon <laughs> what it is. We'll be and there. we'll find out then. Our last two yep. uh, have been uh, landscaping how-tos. So uh, we'll see what we do. Um, yeah. Tomorrow. See what we do tomorrow. 
All right, thanks Underpants. everybody. What was that, Moto? Underpants. 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 Thunderpants. Oh, Thunderpants. Thunderpants. <laughs> Underpants? We're going to talk about underpants. All right, I'm okay with this. All right, I hope that everybody has a really great day, and we will see you, um, golly, yes, tomorrow, tomorrow. next time. Tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, friends. Bye.